Yeah, so you got to make you got to make this simple. I'm very technical, not. No, yeah. All you got to do is look at the camera and talk to me like we're talking in person. All right. We uh, are talking in person. We are Sorry. talking. It's, it's in person as it gets. So, what are you drinking? What did you get? <clears throat> well, here's the situation: is I got this Organic Valley mug, and if you, the my last roommate taught me that if you fill up to cultivating and goodness, uh-huh. that's two, that's two shots. Yeah. So, what is it? Oh, it's vodka. And I ran out of. Uh, Pineapple juice, so it's orange juice and squirt. Really? But we got these uh, tequila shots we've been doing over here. Just got a deer on it. You see that? Oh, yeah, that's perfect for you. Oh, you, you had it? Yeah. Oh, no, the deer is perfect. Or you've had tequila? <laughs> yeah, I've had tequila twice. <laughs> Turns out you can get drunk off that stuff. That's what I heard. I mean, uh, easily. I've gotten close a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we got like several selections of whiskey over here. I bought some horrible whiskey the other night, but it's, uh, bro, that's all that's going on. Uh, you tell me what's going on. You got Lyme disease up there? What's going on in, uh, in wait, wait, where are you? Where do you live? <laughs> where do you live? How do I even know you? Who are you? Uh, I think we're friends from the internet. Oh, right. Uh, Lyme disease, do you really want to hear about this? Yeah, let's talk about Lyme disease. Oh, is it worse than Corona? Yeah, Corona is a, okay, you know, you, you asked me things we can't talk about. Okay. We also can't talk about politics or coronavirus. You can't talk about politics? No, I, I, I've lost too many friends this past week on Facebook. What, so. what about using uh, politics to get DJ gigs? What do you think about that? <laughs> but I'm, I'm, the, I'm, at, I'm in the hierarchy of that politics part. So the, the getting is me getting. No way. You're a politician? No, I mean, I'm, I'm doing the hiring. So like the politics, oh, the poli- which what politics are you talking about? I'm not trying to get DJ gigs. I'm not a DJ. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about, you know, DJs who use politics to get gigs, you know? Oh, yeah, that shit don't work for me. Yeah. Are we talking about Lyme disease or no? Sure, let's talk about Lyme disease. <laughs> no, I, there's a lot of it out here, actually. Yeah. But I came up with this crazy theory about 10 years ago. That if you were born north of Highway 8, which is like this cross highway in Wisconsin, that maybe it wasn't Highway 8, maybe it was Highway 10. North of some highway that you couldn't get Lyme disease if you're born north of that. So like, I don't really, I'm not really very precautious about it. But then I remembered I was born in Janesville, not south, so I can actually get it. Oh, well. So what, but what, I don't have it. So, so we can, no, no, so I can't. Switch this into Corona or politics. Yeah, you can. I, I, I got too many friends on Facebook anyway, so let's lose them all. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm down. Maybe we'll lose a little couple of fans. Uh, <laughs> I've literally lost 50 this week. 50? Why? What did you talk about? What are you posting about? I, you just, you shouldn't drink in Facebook, basically. Why not? What did you do? They just, you know, they just don't like it when you don't agree with them. Don't you have enough rave cred that you can say whatever you want at this point? Ooh, don't bring that up. <laughs> don't empower me with bullshit. Dude, I'm gonna. That's, that's my job. I wanna make you feel I wanna make you feel good in this quarantine. I feel great in this quarantine. This is we every time we do a shot, well not every time, well a lot of times when we do shots, we just scream pandemic twenty twenty and go. <laughs> it's a fucking celebration. Yeah. Seriously, like where I live, there's there there's are we really talking about this? Yeah, we are. We're doing the process. There, there, there's no cases here. There's yeah. like, you know, everybody that's been tested, which is like, I think 300 or some have all tested negative. Nobody wears masks. There's not really like, I, I'm still doing orders through the post office and stuff and they don't care if I come in. You know, nobody's like, I'm sure they're serious, but nobody's really serious. Yeah. And we still don't have any. Huh. And, oh, and my point was, is... I live out here in the middle of nowhere, so nobody, I'm alone mostly and don't leave my house. So I've been preparing, I've been in a 15 year quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's business as usual. What, what, what's the nearest city you live to? Uh, Hillsboro, which is about 10 miles. That doesn't sound like a real city. Like how, or like. <laughs> Population 1500, bro. Oh my God, 1500? Yeah, yeah. 
That's big, uh, isn't it? That's no? that's gigantic. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I mean, the Walmart's like 23 minutes away. That's the other direction, Richland Center. Wow. Yeah. You got a you got a subway in that Walmart or what? What do you have a Starbucks? Is that how fancy you are? No, but there's a Culver's next door. Did they have those by? No, they don't. They don't have any butter burgers. But I think if they ever try to expand out here, they do they do really well. No, because you guys got that. Uh, in and out. What is it? In and out. It's a monster. In and out. Yeah. There's no comparison. Yeah, but there's no butter in In and out. Maybe if they put a stick of butter in In and Out. It'd be better. Oh, it's not an option. It's not a secret. Oh, you can't put butter on there. Oh, well then. You can't get good fries either. You what? You can't get good French fries either. They're terrible. <laughs> yeah and i mean i don't know it's uh the burgers aren't like that crazy great don't get me wrong i just lost another facebook friend in la didn't i yeah that's it <laughs> so, yeah. fucking huggy just dropped me damn it come back bro <laughs> oh well uh, so what's going on with were you planning on doing further this year or what's going on now plan um, um, yeah was- september 4th through the 7th i look like a uh a visionary like we moved it later this year which is a long story that i want to get into but now we, i look smart we got a whole hour what come on what you just want to keep you with the <laughs> gathering of the juggalos is that what it is too much overlap oh have you gone to that <laughs> no i've never i wanted to go i want to go real bad actually but i feel like it's one of those things where you like when you go to um you know like southeast asia or like you know south parts of africa you know where you need to go get like a vaccinated for like malaria right. stuff like that i think if you want to go to gathering of the jugglers you have to go get like a full vaccination suite well they, they have a tetanus booth like at this thing so you're good <laughs> yeah. and I, I just know that if i went like i would just give all this shit up and just join that yeah like i've been wanting to like be death metal forever so like to have like a whole posse where you could paint your face white and black and just like be drunk the whole time. Like that sounds awesome. I hate to spoil it for, but there's, I don't think there's any death metal at the gathering of the jugglers. No, but they paint their face white. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. Well, you can't take, you can't take a weekend to death metal. Why not? I know a lot of people who are really into a whole weekend of death metal. I swear there's like yeah, death metal. They used to do this thing in, in Milwaukee called Metal Fest, and that was like a weekend of death metal. But it was like, you know, pe- people like Cradle of Filth headlining and stuff, you know, so it's like good death metal and then not good death metal. Yeah, what's well, not good death metal? Let's see how many Facebook followers you lose from this. <laughs> well, like I just said, Cradle of Filth. <laughs> hey, but they have, good, like- they have good merch. Right. I think they got hair like you, too. I do. Yeah. I don't know. Do they have green hair now? Are they like trying to keep up with the, the Zoomer? Is that, is that what's after millennial? The Zoomers? I don't you know. Gen X or you, oh, you're a baby boomer. You're Gen X. Gen X. Like I'm, yeah, a little after. We're the best. <laughs> I remember. I, I, read I, an I read an article. Bro. When I was, uh, I remember when they first coined the term Gen X. Holy oh, shit, you are wearing pants. I just saw your leg. I'm not wearing pants. See, look at this. Let's see. Let's see your. Life. I told you I'm not, I'm not prepared for this. There's a, there's a dog chopper down here, so I can't stand up. You have a what, what kind of shirt do you have on today? Uh, crime. crime and crime. Yeah, that's appropriate. So on the back it says it's only a crime if you get caught. Yeah. Yeah. So don't get caught. Yeah. What kind of what kind of shirt do you get away with on your? How many how many acres is your property? And how many ticks do you have? Uh, like 110. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, what's your mortgage like 500 bucks a month? <laughs> My mortgage? Yeah. No, it's like three times that. Really? That's, <laughs> that's less than like the rent for, for one, one bedroom in LA. Right, but you don't got Amish chicks. Yeah, what's it called? Rumspringer? Oh, have you seen, uh, what's that movie? I have, I have. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We're, we're, we're like um, all the like other. Going. How long does it last for? Like a year or two? Well, it depends. Yeah, it could be like a day. It could be six years. It depends how much meth they get. <laughs> Is that a problem with the Amish and meth? No, but in that movie it was. Uh, so, yeah, so for, 
that was my whole plan. Like when I, when I saw that movie, it was like right when I was moving out here, I thought, holy shit, like I can transition from raves into Ramspringas, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. And then like I had these Amish guys put on my roof on my house yeah. and I was asking all these questions and they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, Ramspringer, you know? And I'm just like, when you turn 16 and they're just like, I'm like, what is it like? And they're like, we go to bed 15, we wake up 16. We're still Amish. And I'm just like, ah, oh, they don't do it out here. Wait, they're they pretty... don't do that in Wisconsin? Huh? They don't do that in Wisconsin? Not this community. They're like pretty strict. That's stupid. That's the, whole, that, that's the best part of being Amish. I, that's what I was trying to tell them. Yeah. So for whoever, for, for like the two people listening that are no longer friends with Kurt on Facebook, Rumspringa is the thing that <laughs> most Amish people um, do when they're 16, right? And they get to not be Amish or live in the quote unquote English world, right? That's right. what they call not Amish. They, they, get, they get to decide if they want to be English or Amish. Right. And, uh, and so then they do a lot of meth and bowl, right? That was in that documentary. They just like, they'd like to hang out at bowling alleys and party in barns and do meth and how come you can't remember the name of it? It was like, was it? It didn't have Satan in it, did it? No. Should have. The Devil's Playground. That's, That's what it was. was. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah. It's good. It's a good documentary. I liked it's it. An amazing documentary, yeah. So, yeah, the only thing that was cool about these guys that did my roof is I would, like, go pick them up every morning. I'd have to go to, like, five fucking farms, get these Amish guys. They'd come do my roof, and then I'd take them home. And then the first night when I was taking them home, I was like, my, my van was filled with wine bottles and ho-ho wrappers. And I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, you're not supposed to drink. And they're like, no, no, you can drink when you eat. And I'm like, you're eating ho-hos for lunch. Like, and they're like, yeah, yeah, so we can have wine. And they're up on my roof, which is like a high roof, steep peak, and no, like, safety anything, drunk on wine. Yeah. Is that, is that what they always do? Is that the thing they get, they, like, play, they get around the rules? Is by drinking, ho- or eating ho-hos? I, <laughs> I think the ho-hos are i think the ho-hos are legit yeah yeah that'd, that'd be a pretty clever loophole you're just like eating like little crackers or trail mix and then you're just getting wasted yeah yeah it was funny the last day of the job like they, they took me to subway you brought up subway before as, yeah. as like uh because i paid him in cash you know so it was like they wanted they wanted to take me out to eat so we went to subway and they let me go first so i was like i don't want to spend all their money so I got a half inch or a half, six inch sub, but then all of them got 12 inch subs. I'm like, damn it, I should have got a 12 inch. Yeah. And then we're sitting there and we get done eating and they all only ate their six inches of their 12 and they're wrapping up the other six. I was like, what are you doing? And then they were all taking them back for their wives. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, you can, I wonder how much of a family you can feed on a 12 inch from Subway. <laughs> how much of a family you can feed on a 12 inch? Can you convert to, to being Amish? No, I've asked. They don't want me. I have, they don't, they don't allow pictures of, uh, they don't allow pictures, you know, you can't do, rep- and I got all these like tattoos of like people's faces, uh, so they said it wouldn't, it wouldn't work out. What if you got it lasered off? What if we started GoFundMe for you? <laughs> <laughs> to, to make me Amish? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it's, uh, they would love me, you know. You're already pretty handy, aren't you? Didn't you build a fence the other day? <laughs> oh my god look at this can you see that is it, oh, can you see that bruise what happened like see how it's a bruise from there to there uh, yeah, I thought it was just a tattoo well there is but it come on it's the bruise <laughs> tell me that it's painful yeah. I was building a chicken I was building a chicken coop for this girl I was here and it fucking fell on me and I was like trapped for 10 minutes <laughs> And, my, and the worst part is I had, like, this crazy argument with my neighbor, like, a couple months ago. Well, I don't even want to talk about that because I might get in trouble. But right. so, like, he's, he works at home. You know, he's got an auto shop next door. So he could see me trapped dying. And, like, the person who I was building it for was in the house, like, dealing with their chickens. Well, they weren't in the house. They are on the porch. And, like, didn't hear me. So I'm, like, yelling for 10 minutes, like, help, help. You know, so he's laughing at me and she's ignoring me. And I could, we couldn't even be here right now. I used Corona wouldn't even had a chance to get me. I could have died by chicken coop. Like, dude, just, <laughs> just watch these suffer. That's fucked up. Yeah, he's not friendly. We don't get along. Yeah, apparently not. Oh, and then the worst part was, in order for me to get out, I had to, like, pry it up a little bit, stick a rock under it, and I could just barely pull myself out. But it pulled my pants down and filled my ass up with dirt. So I had to stand up with my pants around my ankles, mud all over my ass. Right. And he's, I'm, I'm sure he was laughing the whole time. Just like, look, I look like an idiot. 
Yeah. Dirt. <laughs> so you think you got it rough? No, yeah. that's, that that's pretty terrible. <laughs> so yeah, I'm in a lot of pain right now, but I'll trudge through it. So let's hear, let's hear your most painful rave story. Most painful rave? Yeah. I want to hear your most painful rave story. It, it, rave is like all plur and, and it's, there's no pain. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all positive, isn't it? Yeah, that's what, that's what I heard until I went to one of your parties when I was, what, 15 years old. 16, you need to be 18 to get in. Really? Back then? Really? I don't remember that. No, no, your, your money's the same color as everybody else's. That's, so right. Doesn't matter. that's right. I don't remember getting ID'd back then. I mean, I wasn't before the Rave Act. Thanks, Joe Biden. Um, I don't remember ever getting ID'd to go to raves whenever he passed that shit. Right. Oh yeah, that's top. see we can we can we can link that. That's topical. So how did, when Joe Biden pushed that rave act back in what is it ninety nine or two thousand? Whenever he did that, two thousand two. Was it that late? No way. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh one was like the crack house law, and then oh two is when I stopped doing parties because of that. Huh. But yeah, I say because of that. But like the fact of the matter is, I was just kind of like over it too. Yeah. But I still wanted to hate Joe Biden. Yeah. And and like, I didn't. Also, I felt like we were doing, we were like one of the naughty promoters, you know? So if they were going to make an example out of anyone that didn't have money to defend themselves, like we could be on that short list. Yeah, for sure. So I was just like, there's no way I'm going to be a fucking martyr for this now, you know? So that's when I moved. So yeah, it's been like, what, 18 years of waiting for revenge. And we're going to get it now. <laughs> <laughs> fight. You should have been there. Like, how good would it have been if he, like, when he tried? You see that video how he challenged uh, some union worker in Michigan to go outside and fight. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, at least I, they, they don't even have rallies anymore. Though I would love to like be able to like have him challenge me to a fight. I'd fight him. Yeah. Would you, what would what would your first hit be? Would you like headbutt him or something? What would be something for dramatic effect? No, I always just go mental, like, and just start swinging at the head. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last few fights I've got in were just, yeah, they, I'm not, I don't know if I'm necessarily good at it. I'm not probably, but I get in fights when I know that I got backup. So I guess it's kind of pussy, but. No, that's called uh... smart. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just like, just start swinging and then eventually someone falls. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. My claim to fame though, is I've gotten, I mean, you know, Dan Dormouse, right? Oh. I wonder he's like, I'm supposed to talk to him at some point too. Yeah, and he's like super badass, like you know, strong as fuck right now, you know. But we've gotten in two fights, and I, I think technically I won both of them. But I mean, he was really drunk both times, so it's like I could say I beat up Dormos twice. Was that before or after he became Mister South Beach? Oh, that's what I mean. It was like yeah, like in the in the '90s, like when he was really South drunk, South. drunk on whiskey and being thrown out of further. Meat, DJ. Yeah, yeah. One was a definite post meet inter interaction. <laughs> Did you ever see them guys? Yeah, that, I mean that's that was a uh, that was I mean that's what's really funny to see Dormouse from like back then, like Mister Soft. He even posted a photo like where he had this really insane um, fucking back hump from being hunched over all the time and being a fucking <laughs> yeah yeah from DJing. Yeah, from from DJing on his on his fucking PC tower, bringing that whole shit out with a CRT monitor, and now he's Mr. Buff Man. It's pretty. When are you gonna have you? Are you are you buff yet? Are you like post rave buff dude now? Yet? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty buff. Like you know, you may have seen some. You may have seen some of my pictures. <laughs> what, she's laughing because she knows I'm not. <laughs> it was funny. Do you know? Do you have you ever heard of that that event Art Basel or whatever Basil uh -huh. or whatever it's called? Yeah, our yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it's called. Can you edit that so I sound smart? Yeah, I, I already did. It's edited. Yeah, I put the smart filter on, so you look. You're wearing a suit right now, and you can't see it because you know you can't watch it streaming live. But you're wearing. A suit. Anyway, I, I, I worked for this company, Organic Valley, for ten years in marketing, and we were a sponsor at one of the galleries down there. And I went down there, and I was just like, I was just telling the story the other day, and I was like walking in South Beach, and all of a sudden I hear like some guy screaming about Midwest hard corps in Wisconsin, you know. I was like, what the fuck? It was Dan pushing like a stroller with his two babies in it and his wife, you know? And then we went out that night and it was like, he was over like the DJing thing down there. 
Yeah. But it was, it was insane. He was like a fucking rock star. Like everybody knew him at the club he went to. And like, you know, it was like red carpet was rolled out for him, you know? And it was like, apparently he was like, you know, the, the, the bad number one DJ down there for like several years running, you know, club DJ or whatever. Uh-huh. And I was like, holy shit, dude, why would you quit doing this? You know? Yeah. But, Wait, but then it? later Craze showed up. Craze showed up and was like scratching. And then all these chicks started like, twerking on the floor on baby powder and stuff. I was like, oh, now I see why you quit. This is fucking mental. <laughs> so, Wait, was he I, don't think he liked, I, don't, I don't think he liked the cigarette smoke is what it was. Was he playing? Break? What was he playing? Wait, he became like a top 40 DJ or what? Yeah, I think he had a reggae night or something at this club that we went to, like, or something. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, that's a long way. His, pretty cool. His, his explanation of it made even less sense, so. Yeah, what was his explanation? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna cross-reference this, this chat when, he, when I talk to him. <laughs> I can't. He's uh, never mind. <laughs> what if he flies? <laughs> next time he goes to Milwaukee, he just finds you and beats you up. What's that? What if next time he goes to Wisconsin, he, he like just find, he's like tracks you down and bench presses you? He could too. That's the thing. Like I would not win that fight now. <laughs> Maybe if you give him whiskey. Give him enough whiskey. Yeah. He's just, he just can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. He doesn't drink anymore, though. So, oh, well, you're fucked then. I guess we better not say anything bad about him. Right. So, Dan oh. rules. Yeah, Dan, Dan's the best. <clears throat> Dan, I hope you're not watching this. I hope you didn't see, hear anything bad we said about you. Uh, you, you talked to him? You talked to him for this, or? Yeah, I, not yet. He's going to. I invited him on and he wants to do it. We're going to talk about how we're oh. both impervious to, uh, to Corona because we, we work out regularly. Oh, right. You're health goth. Are yeah. you still doing that? No, I guess I'm still healthy and I'm still goth, so I guess so. Hey, talk about that a second. I was trying to explain to her. She's like, who's Johnny Love? And I was like, he's this health goth guy. You've probably done his workout tapes. Yeah. But there was yeah. no workout tapes, was there? This is all about sex or something, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's actually uh, – Healthy Health is probably the greatest troll I've ever pulled off. So, <clears throat> you know, I it was really funny because it was like maybe 2013, I wrote an essay about how subculture doesn't exist anymore as we know it and it's because of the internet uh because like you know prior to i'd say maybe 2010 stuff had you know like before like facebook and instagram and maybe even twitter yeah uh you know, if stuff if stuff existed it, it still had enough time like you know myspace and friendster and shit like that it wasn't as as like pervasive as social media is now so you can have like subcultures and everyone in the world wouldn't find out about it right away uh so and like 2013 i wrote this essay about how subculture is dead because you know there's it doesn't have any time to to like to grow to actually like form into something like you know it, it, for me like subculture has to have multiple facets like it should be music it should be like some kind of uh visual aesthetic uh, and there's usually like a form of dress right to kind of like make something you're like okay this is like a subculture and, you know, usually there's like events or something, some kind of event to support whatever the hell it is. And so I remember in like the spring of 2014, so I started working out like a year prior, I think in 2013, because I was like, I was, I had turned 30 and I was like getting fat from touring and drinking beer and whiskey all the time and eating burritos every night at three in the morning. And so I had started um, working out, well, I started eating better. And okay. then I started- Huh? Cocaine wasn't an option? No, I don't do cocaine. I've never done cocaine, believe it or not. Can you believe it? I haven't either. Oh, congratulations. Have a day. Pandemic shot to that. 2020. <laughs> yeah, she's actually pouring a tequila shot, so. <laughs> uh, so uh, I started working out, and, I, you know, I was like, I wear black all the time, so I was like the only dude in my gym uh, wearing all black. So I was getting, like, people were staring at me, calling me Marilyn Manson. I had a friend. <laughs> it was like you know it was like in high school like like these these like super square dudes have no idea what to say like and so they just like say the dumbest shit like they called my friend who was a 77 street punk who had like short blonde hair and like face tattoos they called him eminem and <laughs> so it was like eminem and eminem working out together and uh and so i was like yeah i saw i think maybe the spring of 2014 it's like april or something someone tweeted something about health god and i remember it just came up because you know, we're in April now. So we got like one of those Facebook memories and it's like, Oh, six years ago you tweeted this. And it said, uh, health got the newest, uh, fake 
subculture for people who are neither healthy nor God. And, and then <laughs> I, I started saying it tongue in cheek, you know, because I was like, oh, I'm health guy. Then I started tagging every time I took a gym selfie because it's kind of like me taking a gym selfie is already funny, but let me kind of add this hashtag to be even funnier. Right, right, right. And, and so then it, like people, since I had, you know, more of an internet presence than, you know, whatever idiot kids who came up with the first, people were like latched on to me being the health guy dude. And so then it all kind of culminated in July of 2014. My friend Star Eyes, I don't know if you, you remember, you ever, you ever knew her. She used to be a drum bass yeah. DJ. And she, she was like, hey, do you want to talk about your new record? And then you can do like a, like a joke, 10 Commandments of Health Goth. And she worked for Thump, who was part of Vice at the time. I was like, for sure. So I wrote these 10 Commandments of Health Goth and it was all like very obviously a joke. Like, um, what's a health goth's favorite lift? It's Bill Lugosi's deadlift, obviously. <laughs> Um, and you know it was it was a big joke but then it blew up because these kids these these two kids in portland who had claimed to have created this fucking term all right i guess i gotta i'll do one too i was just getting up to you oh all right well whatever now i'm ahead again Uh, (laughs) so they um they like started sending me all these all these messages like harassing me like talking shit and you're a piece of shit fuck you you're a bro which is really funny because that was like the first time in my life I've been called a bro. I, like my entire life I've not been a bro. And then all of a sudden, like these internet strangers are calling me a bro. And uh, I was like, no, I just started working out a year ago. I'm not a bro. I'm not even buff. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, so then I, 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 I was like really frustrated. I was like, why, why are these dudes like just harassing me? It's like, it was obviously a joke. And I told them, I was like, listen, I didn't claim to have created it. And it's obviously a joke. You know, like the, the whole thing is like a, it's a fucking joke article. And they just kept talking shit. I go, listen, this is going to go one of two ways. Either you guys chill the fuck out and we're cool and we have no reason to have beef because we don't. Or I'm going to bury you in press and everyone, at the end of the day, everyone's going to say that I created health guy. And <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, you know, fucking funny threat, you fucking bro or whatever. And then the three months later, I was in the New York Times as the creator of health guy. <laughs> <laughs> you had work and shit too, didn't you? Huh? You had merchant stuff too, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I still, I still sell it. It's, I still sell like I still like you know one or two shirts a week. It's ridiculous, and I, I mean, I, I like it's funny because I when I got, like got set up with being in Chicago, I was like, okay, I'm gonna become a personal trainer because I, I people were asking me for advice all the time. I was like, I should, I should get certified so I can actually know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. So I became certified, and then I was like, okay, well, I should move back to LA and start being a, being a trainer there because obviously there's more money there. There's more people who are being in a, being fit in LA than they are in Chicago. I mean, Chicago is everyone looks like a potato, you know, ninety percent of them. And uh, so then I moved to LA and I got a job at Gold's and I straight up and they were like, I was like, well, why should we hire you? Whatever, you know, they asked me in an interview, and I was like, oh, I created this world famous subculture called health golf and i can teach classes here and we can do health golf branded classes and they're like all right let's do it and then you know i met with gold's corporate and was doing my class there or whatever so it's really really funny i like i rode that troll all the way for years still and it made me pretty money. good money got me moved back to la <laughs> so. so where are the other guys now fuck if i know dude I, I you know it'd be kind of funny to check uh they, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna say what they're called because I don't want to give them free publicity. But I, I think I checked maybe a year ago out of curiosity, and they had their like little music project had had hadn't, hadn't had a release in probably a year, and oh, they were, they hadn't posted anything in a year, so they just kind of you know they just kind of disappeared. It's it, it was case in point of what I was saying about how subculture you know doesn't really exist how it used to. Like these kids. If they had a like, legitimate, legitimate claim to like forming an actual subculture, they'd still be relevant somehow. But these guys, to them, it was just like, a fucking bullshit Tumblr collage. Uh, and it was actually funny because I remember there was Red Bull did a documentary about it, and they interviewed me and they interviewed those guys. But the majority of the, 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 the documentary was about me and my friends. And the editor of ID, or someone who wrote, I don't know if she was the editor or not, she said, you know, yeah, these kids may have been the first people to coin the term, but to me, the the, per, the people who own the culture is when pe- people actually try to add substance to it. And that was your okay. word. Yeah, that's my whole thing is like, I, I don't really claim originality for anything, but I'll take what other people do and turn it up to 11 all the time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so then at the end of the day, it's like, 
I don't know. I think a lot of people don't even realize there's a further bus from the sixties. They think I invented it, you know, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that, you know, but it, that might be like more of an age thing, you know, but still it's just like whoever does the coolest shit wins. Yeah. So who'd you steal all the satanic imagery from? How'd you get that idea? Cause obviously like rave stuff was super like rainbow. Love everybody. Grab it. Wait, where'd your pants go? <laughs> Back on. Don't put your pants back on. You're ruining this this interview. Hold on. Right here is where it all came from. Ah, uh, of course. Kiss Live Two. This is like I, I when I was like a, in fourth grade. Like I just spent like all my time looking at this gatefold of just all this fire and crazy rock and roll, and I was like, holy shit, that's what I want to do. So then, but I don't, I don't know how, I don't, I'm not, I don't know anything about music. So I just do the theatrics part. <laughs> so yeah, like Kiss and Molly Crew, basically. Because they're not really Satanists, but they just look devilish, you know? Wait, so you're telling me you're not really a devil worshiper? Yeah, I knew, I need to burst that bubble because some people take it too seriously. I feel like you can get away with a lot of that stuff up in whatever forum. You, you could like be sacrificing goats. I thought that's why you got a farm. So you'd have like a, an endless supply of livestock. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I wanted to get goats when I first moved out here, but it's like goats are a pain in the ass because they get out all the time and they're just troublemakers. So then everybody's telling me you should just get sheep instead. And I was like, oh yeah, like the single guy moves to the country and gets like a flock of sheep. Like that's going to go over well. <laughs> so yeah, I got cattle instead. What's better? What's better to deal with cattle or ravers? Uh, well, the the cattle because I kill them all. So. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm a raver, so we're we're great, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. What, I'm so what band were you in that you were touring? I know this answer. I wasn't in any band. I don't have any real talent. I don't know how to play any instruments. What were you? What were you, what were you touring? Yeah, DJing, man. Just DJing. All right, I thought you were in a band. I think I think Plasleco lied to me. Plasleco, oh, God, I haven't talked to that guy in a while. Uh, he has a kid. Is that how I know you? Is through him? Maybe. I mean, I I know him. I mean, I. Uh, oh, I thought you lived with him in Chicago. No, uh, I didn't live with him. I lived with Adamly in Chicago. Oh man, that's it, Adamly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny because when you mentioned Friendster before, I thought of the first thing that came to my mind was Adam Lee because the only good thing anybody's ever said about me on social media is yeah. like, you know how on Friendster you could post those little things about people? Testimonials, and, yeah. What's that? The, the, the test, like the, the testimonials. All your friends had to post it. Fuck, I forgot about right, that. Right, right, right. So, right, so he put, he put Kurt X. He put the X in sex. <laughs> <laughs> It's the only thing I ever remember from social media is that. I just think it's awesome. I forgot about that. Like, yeah, I remember it was so weird how we used to interact back then. Because, yeah, like I remember on, on Friendster, yeah, you had a post and all your friends, you'd post like a nice thing you had to say about that. And now instead, like everyone's just using social media to just like call each other a douchebag in a bro. Yeah, it's bananas. It's so weird how far we've come. Backwards. We you need to go back to Friendster. Yeah, we should go back to Friendster. I think now it's like a Filipino gaming site or like some kind of. Oh, like, it's still around. Okay. I yeah. Don't know. I so. Like, like last because I remember I was like bummed out when uh, when I heard that it, it like disappeared because like all the testimonials I didn't get to save them, and uh, I went and it was like some weird South Asian, Southeast Asian, Pacific Island. I don't know, like Jakarta. I don't know, some weird. Uh, <laughs> gaming thing and it's like where they all play candy crush or some whatever the precursor to candy crush was like like play tic tac toes or something so you joined yeah i joined <laughs> so the reality is so since you're doing this live this is kind of like uh one of these things that everybody's doing right now these these broadcasts yeah, yeah i guess it's live, live stream that's the word i'm looking for so like I've, I've gotten some shit for not being for not doing one you know for not being like community minded or whatever but i feel like you know i've been pushing community for 30 years so like i should probably get a pass yeah totally but i also feel kind of bad that i'm so this is this is i don't i have a dj set up here but i have zero technology or ability to well i'm not a dj either so like i don't i'm not gonna do like a 
uh, DJ live stream. And there are promoters that are doing like this kind of thing. So this is going to satisfy that. Nobody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've done what I'm supposed to do during this quarantine, all right? I'm not used to satisfying people, so uh, ask my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could go that same direction. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good at coupling for a reason. Um, no, I, I, you know, like everyone's trying to do like the, the live stream, Eugene, and, uh, you know, we're doing it too. So I've been like, I'm, I like asking my friends of mine to record video sets and then we rebroadcast re it. But it's like weird. Like I, I try to do it like the first week myself and it's really fucking weird for me to DJ and not see how people are reacting. You know, like yeah. I, I never had like a, well, I've had DJ set up at my house, you know, as I had roommates who've had this stuff in like common areas, but I never, I'm never the kind of person who will just like start DJing at home with nobody around like pra like to practice it i think it's weird because it's like you you know i'm, I'm so acclimated to like seeing how people react like how, how, how am i supposed to know if a track is good if i can't tell people are dancing hard you're like okay i like the track but i don't have i don't have you know the best taste in the world i have terrible taste yeah i'm just the opposite because I, I never look up when i dj so i don't even want to know what's going on i just i just know what i like and like i said before i don't have any idea about I don't, I don't even understand making music, you know, or like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, I don't know anything about music. I just know what I like. Yeah. And, and, but luckily, like knowing what I liked in 1992 was cool because nobody knew what they liked. So I could do what I liked then. And that's what I, people liked because I was doing those parties, you know, there was nothing, no other option. So, but right now I just play a lot of acid when I do DJ and stuff and everybody likes acid. So. Right. That's never going to get old. Right. Do you we're on like the fifteenth acid revival right now. Like someone I got a promo the other day, or I think like two days ago, they're like, Acid House, the sound of twenty twenty. I was like, What? Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome actually. Well I listen to uh do do you listen to any stuff like when people do these streams and stuff or no? Sometimes, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't even, I don't like I don't, you know, it sounds like hypocritical because we're doing it, but I don't like watching, you know. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and like start dancing in my bedroom. If some people do, that's cool because some people are losing their fucking mind, but I right. uh, need to have some kind of social interaction, but I, I, yeah. I, never, I never got that appeal. Right. And I'm not like, I don't know any of the ta technical aspects of DJing and stuff like that. So I have no interest in like watching a DJ to see how they DJ because all I care about is this song and then that song, you know, I don't care how, it, what happens between the two to get there. So it's like that interesting to watch. The only reason I brought it up is because like Yano does these uh, things on Saturday nights is uh, live from the void, I think they're called. And he's been playing acid house on the last few and it's insane. Yeah. Old yeah I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a plug because I'm trying to get him to play it further this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're on, you're on this chat and it's going to be so well, right. everyone's going to watch it. It's going to get back to him. He'll know. Yeah. Well, Actually, we had Garth last year, and uh, they're they're obviously homies or whatever. So he'll tell them. He knows we've asked him already, anyway. Right? Who's who's supposed to play this year if we we're allowed to do that shit? Actually, you should be fine because isn't isn't Wisconsin still like a isn't the governor still Republican? Who or is Scott Walker's gone? Well, who's who's in charge over there? No, they just extended the quarantine for thirty more days. Oh, I thought that. Wait, is your governor still Republican? Who's the who's the boss over there? Oh, we have we have this guy Evers. He's a liberal guy oh, okay so well, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe you're not that would have been the only the only good thing if you still had a republican governor is that they would have opened it up for you then you could well no because there's they're, they're they're doing this week they have like i know there's protests planned on wednesday friday and saturday in the capital you know because it's because like i don't know i think there's like maybe 10 counties in, in wisconsin that have zero cases you know and like there's another 70 that have like 10 or less or some i don't know how many i could be wrong so don't anyone fucking freak out maybe it's 30 yeah i don't know but there's just not i mean milwaukee and madison obviously suck but like the whole state is on lockdown and just people are pissed yeah well i, I was reading you know there's i keep like looking stuff every day because obviously i can't throw any parties while this is going on uh and California's probably going to be the last place to open up because, you know, it's like so, um, so left wing. Um, 
I thought they were. Or I thought they had a plan to open up. It, it, what is it? Everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like they're, you know, they're saying like the, the the infections are going down, but then they're like, we're afraid that if we open everything back up, then it, the infections are going to spike again. And you know, I mean, people are saying that there's not supposed to be any large events until. 2021 which would be fucking insane because people don't realize uh how much how many people depend on nightlife in general to make a living like and they also don't realize how much money aeg has and they're not gonna wait till 2021 right yeah that's also true because you know i've been talking to some large companies i'm not gonna say who because i don't want to jinx it but they're you know we're we were tentatively talking about doing stuff in june july and you know, yeah, obviously, like those are huge corporations, like Live Nation and and Golden Voice right. and AG and and you know, it's like you know, how much money the Hollywood studios have. I mean, if, if you because they they can't they can't you know make any movies or TV shows either, and right. so it's like yeah, like these poor artists are suffering, you know, myself included. But like you know, if you know the people at the top aren't making as much as much money either, so I'm sure they want to make. I mean, you know, it's like having a venue is like it's very fucking expensive and if they're, if they're not using it and i'm sure you know i didn't think about that i'm sure the political pressure they'll, they'll force every, everything to open back up for events before then you know all like these uh major sports because what wwe is still going on because well, Min- i don't think they have an audience though but yeah it's still going on yeah because Vince, Vince, Vince mcmahon is is but it's like you know, when I when I talked to you the other day, like you were wearing this sick Mark Martin NASCAR shirt, you know, like those kind of things are huge. Like you can't just like not have like you know these are two hundred thousand people at events, you know, like it's just it's insane. And you know the good news is is I have a hundred acres, and I think the group gathering ordinance out here is it's either five hundred or seven hundred, so I could just do parties on my own property and put both my fingers in the air, you know, as long as like they don't have it like restricted to like 10, you know? Right. Well, so, you know, well, I mean, we'll see, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't even fucking know. I'm like, you know, I'm, people are like uh, hitting me up like, Hey, do you want to book me when this, you know, in, uh, in the summer? I was like, I'm not even thinking about home in a book right now. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awkward. Cause it's like, even for like further, we had like, I had all like the, the pre bookings done like at the beginning of March and i was a little behind and that's like a whole other story but uh then it was like that 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 second week in march you know it was like starting to where it was like okay we're gonna start buying flights and contracting people and then and all hell broke loose you know and so now it's like all the uh overseas artists you know they don't even know if they can get to the country you know yeah. so it's like they're all on hold and then all the other people that i've talked to that are domestically I mean, they're all, most are still cool or whatever, but they're just, they're not sure, you know, because we picked Labor Day weekend, which is like a super busy weekend. So, but the good news is Burning Man canceled. So that was a lot of people's like hold up, you know, because a lot of people play at that or go to that or whatever. Right. Not a lot, but I mean, some of the people that I had talked to, you know. So I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm not going to spend any money right now. So I'm just like, I'm kind of just waiting it out a little bit. Wait till June and then start worrying about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. We I had some uh, some European dudes who were supposed to play for me last month and this month and next month. Yeah, and that shit's all fucking in the shitter. It sucks because like, well, I mean, I, I don't. Feel, I, I mean, I feel kind of bad for the European dudes, but like, I have friends who are in Berlin. Like one of my friends, uh, she is a dominatrix, and she lives in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did you say it like that? Because I was thinking about it. <laughs> Mom, I'm friends with the Dama Matrix. <laughs> Only one. Everyone else is is like Jesus loving, wholesome. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, she she's out there and she's American and she got. I think they. I remember I, I, they announced that that Germany was giving like artists and stuff like that five thousand euros Holy to shit. like hold them out for a while. And she, she I think she posted she applied on Saturday and got five thousand dollars on Monday. It's bananas because it's like, you know, uh, she got it like pretty fucking easily. She's not, she's an American citizen. She's not a German citizen. And meanwhile, I know there's one, one woman here who's a regular at my party. She's a porn star and she didn't get uh, whatever, like part of the stimulus because 
the government considers what she does is prurient. And so it's like the fucking contrast is bananas. You know, it's like, why? Well, the, 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 that other chick is like spanking someone in Berlin. So she's got, she has some connections. So she got paid. She's doing a good job. Yeah. Def- I mean, <laughs> sure she is. <laughs> You've heard. Yeah, I've heard. No, she, she is, she's a wonderful friend. Um, but yeah, it just like, it, it's, it's, it's wild. Like, I think, uh, I mean, they're going to, they're like the nightlife people just like has, has been my way for at least what, 25 years. It's going to be, it's going to be better for those guys over there than it is for us anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was weird because we had, uh, well, it does, it's not weird. It sucked because we had Luke Vibert booked. We, we're, we're doing this monthly event that we just started. And the first one like was off the hook. And it was great. So it was like, oh, cool. We're doing something that's going to work, you know? And then we only were able to do one, the first one in March. And then we've had to cancel all, all the rest now. But we're gonna, every three months, we're going to do like, a, you know, an international artist. You know? So we had Luke coming in June and it was like, it was super excited about it. And it's out the window now. Fuck. I know. <laughs> Who else did you, did you have booked? Uh, well, the first three, like we had uh, Hyperactive play the first one. Justin Long was going to play the second one. Woody was going to play the third one. And then... It's the usual suspects. Yeah, yeah, we want to start with Midwest stuff. And then, then Luke was playing the fourth one. And then I forget who we had July. Yeah, I don't. And then September was further. And then in August, we had another, or in October, we had another international one. So it's all just on hold. So you're, you're, you're going to be a promoter again. What the hell? Not just, not just once a year? Right. I was, I was stoked. It was fun. Where was it? Where was the party at? Uh, there's this you'd love it it's this place in madison wisconsin called crucible and they do like a couple events like you do they have like one event called leather and lace which is kind of like they play just like goth and industrial and ebm and you know all, all the bullshit and it's like you know, it's kind of it's 20 to get in but it's like free if you come dressed to kill you you know so all people just in dominatrix clothing leather and yeah, you know, it's just, it's fun packed, you know, like the capacity of the club is like, I think 350 or something like that. And they get like 500 through the door, you know, yeah. and it's, but through the night, you know, it's yeah. pretty big. And they have, a, they have another event there. I think it's called Deviant or something like that, which is just people being Deviant. chained up to like crosses and stuff and spanked and shit like that. That sounds like so, I don't like that at yeah, all. Yeah, you, you, I mean, when, when you take soft leather on the road, yeah. you're going to be doing it in Madison and I'll DJ at it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do with the DIY sounds then it further. We can just kick each other's assholes with mud. Oh, <laughs> just like old times. Not really. Maybe you throw a little tab of acid in there first. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then there'd definitely be some duct tape involved, but it's all good. Right? Yeah. Do you have porta potties? Is now what, what, what's what's the toilet situation? Because I'm like, you know, in my old age, uh, you know, I I'm very particular about my. Uh, <laughs> I got a fucking bidet, man. I can't go. I can't shit in a field, you know, like man a tree. Well, it's a, it's been a legal event the last few years, you know. So back in the day, we do like fifteen porta potties for two thousand people. That's but, great. but now we're but now we're doing like legit amounts, you know. Yeah. So it's like there's more than enough porta potties, and this dude who does it, his company's called Mr. Biffy, and like nobody calls them porta potties; they just call them the Biffies now, you know, because this guy. He's a fucking, I hope he's not on Facebook because he's crazy, you know, like he takes his bathrooms fucking seriously and he's, he's really good at it. So yeah, we got plenty of those, but then there's a, there's a shower house on the property where there's like flush toilets too. Yeah. So, so, so for like ladies like you, it would like be totally okay. Yeah. Well, you know, they've really come a long way with porta potty technology. I have to say. <laughs> we have, I mean, I, I looked at some of these old, I was, I was looking at some a while ago and I was like, I was embarrassed, like, at, like, my, my, my health and sanitation <laughs> protocols, you know, like, whatever was going to cost me the least amount of money, you know? Yeah. It's like, but, but all those fuckers, you know, they used to vandalize all that shit and stuff in the 90s anyway and ruin it. So it's like, I'd end up paying for it anyway. So, it's like, they didn't deserve it. Yeah. I, cause I like my party, we get, fresh porta potty delivered every night and like people there's like pretty reticent to to try them they're like i don't want to go in a porta potty but you go in there 
and, you know, it's like, you know, I've been like so trained from decades of this shit of like, you know, like taking a big breath and going and plug my nose <laughs> before I go in there. And, and now like I go in there like, I'm like, you know, it's like inevitably you can never hold your breath for the, t- the time it takes for you to get a piss out. I, I've never been able to do it successfully. And in fact, like the, work, the thing that happens every, to me every fucking time is that I'll, I'll like take a big breath before I go in, I go in and start pissing. And then the piss, because I've been drinking, takes longer than usual. So then what happens is I have to take a, I'm like, I'll like have to gasp for air. So now all I've done is like, instead of getting like normal sized breaths of like piss and shit air, I had to gasp in piss and shit air. Uh, I know what you I know exactly what you say. It's like you're, you're trying to hold it, hold it, hold it. And next thing you know, you're taking like, instead of 10 little breaths, you're taking one giant one, which is equal to 20 little. Yeah. So you're screwed. And so it's deep in, in like every fiber of my lungs. But then, uh, so, so it's happening but like, you know, even with my own, I was like, there's a couple of times where I like haven't been able to use the employee bathroom and I've had to run out there like, I mean, I got to piss, I'm throwing a party. And I'm like, you know, do the thing, like, I like inhale. I was like, oh, it smells like Febreze in here. It doesn't smell bad at all. So they've, they've come a real long way. You know, they've got like, they've got like a, <laughs> they have like a you urinal. Had, you, had, you had porta potties at soft leather events? Oh, yeah. They do it in a warehouse. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, it's in a warehouse. I thought you had a club out there. You don't. Uh, no, no. I mean, uh, yes. If anyone's watching, it's in a club. <laughs> if anyone, uh, I, I remember Mo drum cells. Didn't he play at one that got shut down recently? He played. He played. Well, he got shut down a year ago, and it sucked because uh, I was like so excited to have him because I, I think I was the first person to book him in Chicago in like 2004. And wait, wait. But was it was this soft leather? Was it the second, or the first time he played? First time he played for me was in 2004, and that wasn't soft leather. That was. I did a party and I had a. No, no, no. But he's still, he's only played once for you out in LA. He's played for me twice. He played for me once. They got busted a year ago, and then he played for me again. Oh, okay. A couple months ago. Uh, right, right, right. I yeah. mean, I know he was. I know he was like super hyped the first time, like on Facebook. I was, he was promoting it like crazy and everything. And I was like, holy shit! Like Johnny's got it going on out there with these whatever the hell they are. <laughs> whatever the hell. Yeah, um, yeah. It was like because it was like that was. It, it, we were like on a real hot streak. Like everyone, we were in like a, a string of good bookings like every week for two months and then he was gonna play and i think it, you know it's partly my fault because i'm a fucking idiot and i talked i talked to the la times and uh i talked to the la times and so they they the fucking cops came a week later <laughs> after like this article about the party came out so um and it, it's just like all these people who had never had never come before were like, mm-hmm. like hey I'm, fu- I'm coming tonight for the first time and you know i'm like never looking at my phone when i'm doing a party because i'm overwhelmed and uh and so then like after the party got busted i was like i snuck out you know because uh, it's not my first rodeo and i like made it out and then i looked at my phone because i was like trying to call everyone to make sure everyone was all right and i saw like oh i'm coming for the first time hey wait well, there's a bunch of cops here and then you know as i'm driving because i sort of <laughs> Times. it's like hundreds of people in the street and i was like oh my fucking god like this would have been the biggest soft leather ever um and then after that because that happened we had to go members only just so we wouldn't get in trouble for oh, the- yeah, okay. yeah i played out there like back in the day for like teff and reza and, and wade and those guys and like the, the after hours parties everything was just freaking insane you know like like you're talking just like all these people out in the street and it's like in la like in like the worst neighborhoods you know and they're just like it, I don't know. Everything just seemed like so sketchy and like scary, <laughs> like like worse than Chicago. No, no way. There's no way that I mean. I think Chicago still like. There's still parts of Chicago that like you don't want to go to even during the day. Um, right. And I don't think there's anywhere like that in LA anymore. Like you know, like in the '90s, like South Central is like horrifying. It's, you know, Compton and all the shit, like all the gang activity and and. You know, when I was growing up and I was watching all this, these movies about like, uh, like uh, Blood In, Blood Out, stuff like that. It's about East LA gangs. And right. I, it's, I, when I was living in Lincoln Heights, it's like on the east side of LA in 2008, I lived right off the hill where there's this like this huge, this iconic scene in Blood In, Blood Out where this guy gets killed or they kill somebody or I forgot what it was. And, and, uh, I lived on that fucking hill. And like the, the house I lived in was like this brand new, like remodeled, like super fucking nice, had a wine fridge and granite countertops and blah, blah, blah. And it was not dangerous at all. And oh, yeah. you know, like, there, you know, I'm sure there's like parts, you know, like Boyle Heights now in like East LA is like, sure, I'm sure there's parts where like, you don't want to fuck around, but it, you know, it's, like, it's not like in Chicago where you, you, if, you, if you're on foot, 
like fuck that. But I'm saying that, but also, did you ever go into parties at Route 66 back in the day? Did you ever hear about that spot in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. One of my uh, one of my partners got shot there, and then he didn't. He just put the New Year's party like two weeks later. <laughs> Nick from Enjoy. I don't know. If oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I remember. I would think I was like 16 or 17, and I had gone to like some raver meetup in in downtown, and I met up. There was like you know some girl that like befriended me, and I was like, oh, let's. There's a party tonight. There's a rave tonight at, at Route 66. We should go. And so I had fucked up because I didn't like secure a ride, but I was like, okay, I know it's, it's off the red line. And I didn't realize how far it was from the train. I was like, I know, I know like it goes to 66 and it's 66 and you can drive, how bad can it be? So we took the fucking train at midnight and got off and walked. And it's maybe like two miles from the train station. And, and you know, and it was a fucking bad fucking neighborhood. And I didn't encounter a single person in the fucking street. And I made it and I was, you know, I was like, you know, wearing fat pants. 16 years old with probably like a echo hoodie or something looking like a fucking idiot <laughs> so gangster is what you're saying yeah totally very dangerous but yeah i mean <laughs> yeah Bruce six like people got shot there like every other week and like a promoter got robbed there like once a month yeah, yeah. I, was, I was gonna say people got shot the promoters got shot yeah. <laughs> you know? i know yeah but, i think but, but i think daft punk played there did they did, who they play for them uh vibonauts i think did a party like after further or maybe ruddick yeah, Reddick. Oh, yeah, Dust Tracks. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Did you know that guy? <laughs> yeah, I met him a couple of times. He, he owns a couple, I think he still owns a couple of spots in Chicago. I think he had Crocodile and yeah, a couple other places. He showed up at Further last year, but he showed up on Monday during cleanup with a truckload of booze and meat. And yeah. I was there till Thursday cleaning up, and he was still fucking there. And like, I think Jess One lives up near that venue. Is DJ from Rockford? Yeah, I and I think I think Reddick was still there like two weeks later. Like, I don't know. He's got he's got a void sound system and a lot of liquor, so I guess he's okay. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Well, not right now. Everything's fucking closed down. It's fucked just like everyone. Hey. Well, he he would do whatever he wanted. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, do, you have any, do you have any questions or no? I'm asking you questions. Hey, you know what? I, you know what? Since you since you bothering me now, asking me ask ask you a question, I want you to tell me the story about that that DJ that I'm not supposed to ask you about that caused all that drama in your little Facebook group. <laughs> She's awesome. <laughs> you know? what, what do you want to know, yeah, man? Yeah. I, I, made, I, made, I made a really long fucking about it. case closed yeah all right here's here, here's a here's your question yeah, but, but, you know and actually i was you know the funny thing you bring that up is because we were cooking dinner before and my friend jody was asking about or i, don't, well, I was talking about it to her and she didn't know the whole story yeah. and, and i think i i just got done telling it like an hour ago you know yeah. and but the at, at the end of the day it was like not as fucked up as it was you know it's yeah. like most of my almost most of my bookings i do direct you know, because I just would rather not, you know, we just want to make sure people are down with the event. Yeah, plus, I want to, plus, I want to get a good deal. So it's like, I'll do it that way, work it out with the artists, and then like finish it with the agents if I have to. And she didn't want to finish it with the agents. You know, she's just like, we just did it direct because do you remember JJ from Louisville? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's really good friends with her. And actually, Maria used to like uh, sell mixtapes at her events back in the day, you know? like for JJ and stuff, you know? So like, she was cool. So I knew her and I just called her directly. We worked it all out. But then like that, that year was a, a bad year internally, <laughs> I guess, for like the further team or whatever. So like a lot of the work fell on me that summer. And I just let a lot of shit like fell through the cracks, including like some of the bookings that were direct or whatever. And, you know, she just said that she was going to handle everything. Because you know she, you know she did. She was playing for nothing. You know she just told me to donate some money to a charity in her name, yeah. and that she would handle the 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 flights, and I would just pay her back. But I never really, I didn't really follow up on it like I probably should have. And you know, but I mean that's a two way street too. You know, so then by the time like August rolled around, like the girl who was like helping me with like uh, the advancing all the artists and stuff, like advanced her and she kind of let it fall through the cracks too. So it was, it was all good at the time, but 
then there was just like this weird issue of like the the messaging of it, you know, and, and I guess we didn't see eye to eye on that. Yeah. yeah. And, in, and in the meantime, shit hit the fan. So. <laughs> Who's the biggest nightmare you've had to deal with? Like who sucked to fucking deal with? Who, you know what? Let's make it easy. Who can you talk shit about that you don't you're not worried about? Someone who's like totally washed up, you don't have to worry about them, any repercussions from it. Give me, I mean, I'm sure people want to hear gossip from some fucking ravers over here. You know, it's not really like that though. It's like, like I said, like almost, you know, 90% of the people, like I'll, I'll like talk to other people I know and to try to get like a direct email address for someone or back in the day, a phone number, you know, or a pager number or whatever, you know, yeah. and like, you, it, it, or just because of the record label, everybody knows the label or whatever. So it's like, you do a lot of this stuff direct and, you know, so it's like if, if I'm not going to hire somebody that's not down, you know, it's like right. if, you're, if you're, if you're, if I call you, if I call you and you're an asshole, I, I have no interest in booking, you know, cause there's like a million DJs, you know? So I want to find somebody that's going to like be cool. And then like, they're going to think the event's cool and then they're going to bring it, you know? And like, really, we, we I, I mean, I've had a few bookings that weren't mine that sucked. Like, uh, the funk devoid you know i think or slam actually oh from, what? yeah have you he played for you or them no i like slam but what happened uh they just were not feeling our hospitality oh. <laughs> it was that it was that further like 2000 they're all in the middle of nowhere you know so it's a shitty hotel that doesn't have a star rating and they you know it was just it just wasn't you know, we just didn't really take care of people. Was just, you came to the party, we gave you drugs, you DJed, and then you went back to the hotel, you know? And they weren't really feeling that. And there was a big, big, bad, bad, a bad storm that night, so they didn't want to play because it was actually really fucking dangerous, you know? Like, the electrical cables were going through the, the water and stuff, you know? But, like, Marky G and, like, those guys were just like, fuck yeah, we'll play, you know? And they didn't care. But yeah. Slam was like, yeah, we're not down with that. So they didn't play, and then I wouldn't pay them. You know, so it was like not, uh, it got into like a physical altercation. So they'll never play for me again. Damn. And there's been a couple other DJs. Like I know during these new furthers, there was a DJ who wanted, you know, like weed was part of his rider, yeah. you know, and it's like, yeah, yeah, we can get, you know, I can't get in trouble for saying this. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so they're, they're so they're like, you know, well, yeah, we can hook up whatever you need. It's not a problem. You know, part of my offers to everybody is always you get a flight, uh, ground transportation, a hotel, your rider, and a party. You know, so a party could mean everything from hookers to drugs to whatever. You know, whatever you need, we're gonna make sure you're fucking happy while you're here. You know, and so like when he sent his over, he wanted some stuff, and it was cool. But it's like there's cops like outside of the venue. You know, like we're not going to like bring that shit to you. You're going to come to it, you know? Right. So he was like, just make sure that stuff's at the hotel. And I was like, no, no, you got to come here and anything you want is going to be here. And they just didn't understand that I'm going to send out one of my professional drivers, you know, with like a bunch of weed and ecstasy, you know, to a fucking hotel 30 minutes away. That's just not going to happen. You know, you're going to yeah. come here. And so there's been some, there's been some arguments about that kind of stuff, but yeah, everybody's really cool actually for the most part. What's the best writer you've gotten that you've had to fulfill that you fulfill? I, no, I, I mean, unless you're in trouble for saying legally, you can say you didn't fulfill it. Well, that's the thing, you know, it's like in the nineties, like even Daft Punk, when they played for us, yeah. like, and this isn't like, you know, me trying to whatever, but it's like, it was like a less than a thousand dollar deal. And it was like two plane, two, no, I think it was four plane tickets from France. And they just wanted to come to Chicago to go to Chicago. You know, they, I don't really know if they necessarily knew about the party or whatever, but there was no hotels. We had like trailers on the property with uh, foam mattresses and no sheets and stuff, you know, it was like, so I guess the point of what I'm trying to say is there was zero riders were fulfilled from 92 to 2002. Like, it, cause people didn't really care, but, but I always like during that whole break that I was taking, I always felt bad. Like, you know, I had like hundreds and hundreds of people play for me, but I, I never really got to know anyone, you know, or, or never got to like hang out with anyone or like, even though they had like a blast at the party, they were, they would never say that like, you know, that we took care of them really well. You know? So I kind of always felt bad about that. So then like these new furthers now, like we have like a headquarters where we hire some of our people to like, you know, cook meals the whole time and just like, really take care of the artists, you know, and like people like Tommy Sunshine and stuff stay with us the whole time, you know, and they just got like 
million fucking stories, you know, and it's just like, the, you know, so they, everybody that comes there has a really good time. Nobody gets wants hotels anymore. They just want to stay at headquarters with us and they know they're going to get food and beverages and drugs and whatever else they need, you know, and they're going to have fun. So yeah, it is weird though. Like, cause I, you know, those whole like 10 years or whatever back then you know, advancing wasn't even a thing, you know, but it, but it is now and it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's like just like dotting all these I's and crossing all these T's. It's just like so much fucking work and it's ridiculous. And actually, like during this whole like it's funny you say it, because I like I'm drinking tequila now and I've never drank tequila in my life. But the reason we just got done drinking five bottles of tequila in two weeks because they were all fucking left over riders at these new furthers because everybody wants like a, a bottle of this or a bottle of that. Yeah. And they'll take like two drinks out of it in the night. And I'm I mean, I'm looking over here because there's two boxes of liquor over here that are filled from rider requests, you know, and it's like, they don't want this shit, but they, the riders, you know, and we'll get it. So this is an awesome pandemic just because of, uh, DJ riders. Yeah. You know, on my rider, I, uh, I had two things very important. One was a pill of Viagra. And <laughs> the other thing was three packs of the newest uh, set of Magic the Gathering. And, <laughs> and uh, oh, David Alter's in the chat. That was a shit. Uh, yeah, he's actually, you know, <laughs> I was talking about the Yano sets before. He's in, he's in every one of those. I see him in there, like Davidian 777, I think is the thing, you know. He'll be sending me messages during, he's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, uh, that's the thing. Uh, but yeah, so like I, it took me a while to make it through all the the Viagras because it's like <laughs> <laughs> all that was just one no but I mean I, I would I was playing all the time you know back when I had a career <laughs> back when okay, I was okay, so you'd stockpile yeah yeah well because you know when you're young you don't need to uh, if you don't actually have to eat, eat, take them like and I was you know my buddy uh, oh, you never did cocaine so you didn't need Viagra right but you know what's funny is is my buddy Rude Jude who lives across the fucking street from me now and I never see the prick uh, he used to be on Judge you I know he's friends with Chico and all this shit anyway. He's a fucking degenerate fuck. I used to trade him 2CE, which is my favorite research chemical back when it was still legal, for pills of Viagra. And he told me, that, Look, since you don't actually, you're not actually old, only take half or else you're fucked. And do not, like, he's like, do not stack it with anything because you'll blow your fucking heart out. And this... <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. You're going to pen. I need this information. Yeah, right? no, this is important. So, so I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really do any drugs. So, uh, and this is before. I, I didn't, I didn't start doing drugs until I was like 24, I think. You know, that was like a year ago. <laughs> 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 really uh, so I remember um, the first time I, t I, I took a pill of Viagra, it's actually really funny. I was playing a party in Nashville. And I remember the, the, the time I played a gig in this, at this party before, uh, fuck, I, I forgot what the name of the party was, this, this dude Jeremy Todd was the promoter. And it was so fucking fun. And it was like, it was like, but it was like, I couldn't believe how good the party was. And so then when I got booked again, like maybe eight months later, I told a bunch of my friends like, yo, you guys have to come to Nashville. It was, the party was so fun. So I had friends come in from Chicago, from Boston, from Charlotte, from Atlanta. And we all convened, yeah, yeah. we all convened in in nashville we were like partying and while i was djing there was this girl who i had seen before and she was like she was like really attractive and she was a, a cheerleader for the nashville Predators, so she was professional hot right? <laughs> like professional hot and, and then you became a nashville predator yeah <laughs> so <laughs> grabbing my ass and i was like oh my god like what's going on here uh, you know yeah. i'm not used to this kind of shenanigans and she's like grab my and i was like you know what cool like as soon as i'm done djing you know, we're gonna i'm gonna find her and so i finished djing and we're like making we're making out behind the dj booth and i'm like you know especially like back then like i you know we're, we're driving city to city so and i was i shared like a hotel room with my friend slash tour manager slash driver so it's like you know when you're in that kind of situation you're trying to like not take someone back to the hotel room because you can't you know you can have sex when someone's in the next bed but it's not ideal and i'm gonna you know foot in, i'm gonna put a little pen on that because i'm gonna go back to that in a second but um so I, was trying to, I was trying to fuck her at the club and she was like um, she's like no no wait you know let's, let's go back to my place and I was like okay fine but I was like you know what let me let me try let me try the one of these bagger pills let's see what this is all about 
And so I was digging in my bag and I had, I, I found a pill and I was like, okay, I need to swallow, I need to drink this down with something. And all of it was like these tall boys of old style, stag by the DJ booth, but some of them had cigarette butts in it. And I was like, okay, if I, it was like, it was like a game of Russian roulette. Like if I grab a can of beer that has a cigarette butt in it and I slam it to try to drink this pill, I'm going to puke it all up. So luckily I grabbed a, a can that didn't have any, any, any cigarette butts in it and I drank it. And then we were like, we go outside, we take, take a cab and we go back to her place and it's two in the morning. And so every, all the clubs are getting out. And, and, and so we're not, we're stuck in, in a gridlock. And I was like, fuck, we're fucked. Uh, you know, how long is this going to fucking take? It takes half an hour to get home. And by the time we get to her house, I start feeling the blood, you know, the tingle, you know, the shit starts working. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So we, you know, we go back, we go into her, her apartment and we, you know, we, we fuck. you know, that's what happened. <laughs> and uh you know like I I, i'm done and i like roll over and i'm like about to go to bed and i'm like laying on my stomach and all of a sudden i feel like my my erection come back and it was like a kickstand and it like kicked me right up so, so i'm like <laughs> <laughs> and i was like holy shit what the fuck and and i was like all right well i might as well like you know put it to you so like you know like i was like hey and she's like hi and i was like let's go and she's like oh she's like oh my god and so we started having and she's like she's like oh my god like don't ever leave me. Like, please stay here. I'm just like, if she only knows I'm on performance enhancing, you know, drugs. And I'm like, just going and she's like, having a great time. I think we had like three, sex like three or four times. And it was like bananas. Because I don't know if you ever used it, but when you use Viagra, it's like your dick is like a steel rod. It's like my mom could have walked in and like, you know, like kicked me in the ass and it wouldn't have gone away. You know, it was bananas. <laughs> and so then the I next day. Sex, so I don't even know what this is. What are you talking about? What? I've never, I'm a, I've never had sex, so I don't know. Oh yeah, no, it's it's cool. You should ask the Amish about it. They do. <laughs> uh, so the next day, my friends picked me up, and and we're like, okay, we're going to this indoor water park, and in had and was it no no not Hattiesburg, it's Sevierville, Tennessee, which is the hometown of Dolly Parton. And it's in, they call it Dolly. You did not have sex with Dolly Parton. No, I didn't have sex with Dolly Parton, but it, I, I met, I met her niece at a festival that I played like two years later. Anyway, that's not, that's not as good of a story because I don't have sex with her either. Um, but so we, we go to this water park and like I said, we used to do 2C all the time. And so, you know, all my friends, we all met up and we're like, okay, let's all drop in. And so we all take 2CE and I had not known this until like after we took these pills and it takes about half an hour for the pill to kick in that one of my friends, he, I, he, right before I left the, the party, he was like, hey, give me 20 bucks. I need to go get some cocaine. And I'm like, you motherfucker. Are you serious? So I gave him like a $20 bill and he fucked off. So while I was off fucking this cheerleader, my buddy uh, from Boston had like taken my other friends on this like wild goose chase to find cocaine. And so they, they went to this, this coke dealer's house and they get there and the coach dealer was like, oh, I don't have any coke. All I have is opium or, or something. And, 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 this, and my friend, everyone's like, what the fuck? But my friend was like, all right, fine, fuck it. <laughs> so he smokes his opium out of the fucking, uh, I wasn't there, but I was told after. You know, he smokes the opium off this uh, piece of aluminum foil and like, and like, and he, and he, like just it's fucked up all night, right? And so my friends are like, they're like, this is a fucking nightmare. I feel like I'm in a David Lynch film. And they told me this like after we dropped in, they're like, yeah, you know, Greg did opium last night. So I'm like proceeding, I'm like starting making fun of him while he's starting to trip, you know, for, for, for doing opium. And then he spends the remainder of his trip wedged into the, in between like a couch and a wall because now he's having a bad trip because he's, he's coming off of opium and going into this really heavy hallucinogen. And so he told me the entire time that he was tripping that he thought he was covered in maggots and blah, 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 this and the other. Meanwhile, I'm like five feet away on a pull-out mattress with this other girl. And, you know, we're, um, we're about like, I'm, we're like tripping and we're like starting to mess around. And we start having sex and I start feeling my fucking heart pound. And I'm like convinced. I'm like, this is it. I'm going to fucking die right now because I'm an idiot. And I took, a, I stacked the hallucinogen with, with, uh, with Viagra and I'm going to fucking die. I'm going to die having sex while tripping balls. And I'm not going to know if I'm dead because I'm tripping. And so it's just going to be like this fluid thing from like being alive and tripping balls to just being completely fucking gone. Anyway. Totally awesome. So yeah, so I died. No, I'm 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 here. <laughs> uh, but then, like, I was like, holy shit, because it, you know, it's like, uh, this shit's real. Like, I I'm so, uh, the fortitude that some people have to do that shit is, is bananas. I I mean, obviously, I did, but I was like, it scared the fuck out of me because I I was for sure like I could feel 
you know, right, right. Had plenty of hallucinogens, you know, you, and it's like, I got in a fucking thought loop. I was like, this is it. I'm going to die. I'm going to die with a fucking boner in a wild, in a water park. So somehow this all ties into that today is bicycle day. So we're, this is like the hallucinogen episode. A bicycle day? Yeah, yeah. Albert Hoffman took like LSD for the very first oh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, don't act square. Sorry. No, I, you forgot. I'm a bro. Remember? I'm a bro. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I know the whole plan was to take LSD today, but instead we just worked in the barn. So. Yeah. I mean, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be an interesting uh, live, live stream if we were both tripping and talking and like just staring at each other. Wouldn't it be awful yeah, though? Right. Yeah, so. Someone would appreciate it. Not, probably not many people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd have a good time. I'd be like, let me turn the lights off. Turn the lights off and get under a blanket. Run some music. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, so my rider, that was my rider, was Viagra Pill. <laughs> <laughs> but three packs of Magic the Gathering. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people fulfilled it. Like, I kind of did it as a gag, and it really worked, you know? I wouldn't even know where to get that. Go to, go to Walmart, dude. You get it both. You go to the pharmacy to get the Viagra, and you get to go to the little checkout, right by the checkout, and get the Magic the Gathering. Wait, like, anybody can just buy it? You got uh, a prescription. Yeah. I think it's a prescription. Huh? I think you need a prescription, but I mean, everyone has like a dad, you know, or an uncle. <laughs> everyone <laughs> has a dad. Overmail <laughs> in their life. Everyone has someone in their life that doesn't have a hard on. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a hard on right now. Not <laughs> well, yet. <yeah>. Not anymore. Pants <laughs> <laughs> back on, it kind of killed it for me. <laughs> so yeah, riders and hospitality are sorted. Yeah. Cool. So <laughs> if, I, I might, I might, I might make the trek. Uh, it, I, yeah, that's what you know. I think is if you went to if you ever went to any furthers, uh, I think you're immune for, to coronavirus, right? Like if you spent like three days baking in the sun, you know. No, I think if you if you went to the 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 attic camp or you know where Dormos was yeah. set up, yeah. you're totally immune, and yeah. you might be pregnant, so you might want to check. Yeah, you've been <laughs> a twenty year pregnancy. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. Yeah, back in the day, it was always funny because just like we never. Like I said, our, the hospitality sucked, yeah. but like, you know, we made sure people got high and it was always funny because my parents were like my first point of contact from DJs. Wow. Like they would, they would, none, none of my friends were too fucked up to go like pick up DJs. So my parents would, were always at the furthers and stuff and they would all the airport runs, you know? So it's like the first person that like these like international DJs would see is my mom and dad who are like not you know that's not their reality you know so it's you got like if and mixmaster morris and all these people like looking for weed and acid and stuff and my dad you know they'd be just like yeah we don't know <laughs> you know? <laughs> we're just gonna get you to the party kurt will take care of that when you get there whatever you're talking about i'm not sure i think it might be drugs but maybe not <laughs> the funniest one and i just gotta tell you this because it's like it, it's just i don't know like my, my for further 96 the daft punk year they drove themselves because they came up from chicago but my parents that one was out in like kind of actually it's about 30 minutes from where i'm living now but uh which is like three hours from milwaukee where everyone was flying to and they went back picked up like i forgot who they all picked up but frankie bones was in one of the loads and my mom came back and she was just like oh my god kurt i met the guy who invented rave you know <laughs> she just went on and on about these because Frankie, I'm sure, talked like the whole fucking three hours just about oh, all this stuff. Man. And I love Frankie. Don't get me wrong, you know he's he's awesome. But like, I'm sure he just had eight bazillion stories just about like everything from day one on, you know. So my mom still talks about that to this day. Like she'll bring up the fact that did that guy who invented rave play for you this year? <laughs> I, just think, oh, he oh, I loved out. him. He was so polite. <laughs> He was a nice, that Frankie Bones guy, he was nice. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, my mom doesn't talk like that. I'm not, I don't know why I'm using that voice. Uh, what is it? Your mom doesn't have a, a, hand, a Midwestern accent? No, she's normal, just like the rest of us. Oh, that's good. That's good, it's good to be normal. <laughs> you know, being normal is underrated. <laughs> I'm definitely, yeah, it's weird. Like, out here... I'm definitely, I mean, I've been out here like since 05. So what's that? 15 years, you know, and it's all, it's all rednecks, you know, and just like Amish people, you know, 
it's not normal. Well, it's, it's overly normal, but like people can't figure me out. They're never really sure, you know, and it's like the name of my farm, you know, you have to have a, a legal name for a farm or whatever. So I call it devil compound, you know, I just deliverance and changes to devil and we call it the compound. So like all my legal stuff has devil compound on it. And when I opened up like a, a business account, you know, in, under that name, you know, the lady at the bank was like, Oh, I've heard about you. Aren't you running that scrap yard out there? And I'm just like, what the fuck are you like? Where, why, how does this even sound like a scrap yard? Like, I don't even ask questions. I'm just like, yeah, no, it's not a scrap yard. But a lot of other people think I do like something with computers. And I'm sure the rest of them know that it's a cult. So, yeah. <laughs> So wait, what, what do you actually, is that like a, a working farm? You actually like make money off and shit or what's the deal? Or you, is yeah, I've got, I have cattle here and uh, it's maybe a third of my income is a farm. <laughs> oh, shit. What does, what does Davidian think about that? He's a, uh, I've seen, I see him post a lot of vegan stuff. He's like very anti cattle farming. My, my last girlfriend, my last girlfriend, it was funny. Like she moved out here and, and you know, it, she was, she was vegan. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you know i guess with all vegans maybe not all vegans but with her at least she uh like a lot of the problems that people have with that sort of stuff is just like the whole factory farming aspect of it you know yeah. but it's like if you like watch these animals being born and you're taking care of them for two years or whatever and then like watch them being processed it's like you're really connected with it you know so like the, the 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 issue of like inhumane tree oh and you're raising them for two and a half years or whatever too you know so it's like there's not really like there's no the inhumane aspect doesn't come into it you know because you're you can really respect that they're like giving your life for for you you know so she ate me show what I'm, I guess what I'm say is she ate meat all the time <laughs> she was here. <laughs> so it's like when I when I met her we had a lot of like uh, Ethiopian cabbage dish and uh like buddha bowls and stuff like that and fucking a year later we're eating hamburgers and steaks you know <laughs> oh my God. You, you, you converted her that's fucked up i'm calling yeah. you on you and i just talked to her recently you know and she said she's not healthy because she doesn't have this this compound meat anymore so i don't know look at that <laughs> i don't even should we even be talking about this yeah why not i, I don't want to upset david man you know what, David? David is is a father, and he needs to fucking my <laughs> what? A fucking father, and he's to, well. How, how, he's got like two kids. You know what? Davidian is some per, like uh, he's uh, he's partially responsible for for me being the degenerate that hey, I. Hold on a second. Did you just say he has kids? Oh yeah, he's got kids. I'm I'm I was surprised. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's got kids. Isn't that wild? I'm saying yeah. I'm, I don't know. I have, I might have kids somewhere, but. I don't know where he is. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah, we, we, we were talking about acts and rides and stuff before. Like, that was maybe single handedly the best performance that ever happened at one of the parties was when 99 went into 2000. Wow. We had Superstar Love going at midnight. And they just like fucking crushed it. You know, they pulled out all the stops. There was like naked people on the stage. Like, people dressed in like every costume you could possibly there was i don't know how many they, they must have had 20 people there and like strippers and like a, an alien dressed up as jesus and tj richter with his like giant penis thing and and and, and, and david and ryan like playing electro music you know at, at midnight like so the clock strike mid clock strikes midnight everybody thinks the world's gonna end because of y2k and then superstars of love takes the stage our security sucked of course so it's like everybody, you know, there was like six, 500 people at that party, you know, and like a thousand of them were on stage for the countdown. So it was just like complete mayhem. And like, they had all these like characters and like, and, and KY jelly and, and, and lubricants and pools filled with jello and just like, it was complete insanity, you know? And it was like one of, one of the most awesome moments in history, rave history. And David's responsible for that. And now he has kids, and I still have footage of that, so I can show them if if they need to see it. Yeah, I wonder if his kids. I'll ask him. He's he's he's. I asked him to be on this thing, and he uh, he said he's now. So I wonder. Oh, if I, yeah, yeah. I, I he's gonna he's gonna be on it at some point. I think at some point I'm gonna start. I'm gonna have like 
two people, like two people on it once, so we can like really share war stories. Um, I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about this the other day, like how like Zoom goes between like the people talking. Yeah. But then I saw like I think it was Dubfire or Chris Liebing was doing one the other day with like six people talking. Yeah. And they were all like on screen, but then it had like a green box that like went over like who was like actually speaking at the time, you know? Right. I was pretty cool actually. It's fucking this is the future, bro. We're in the future, man. <laughs> Y2K is real. Y2K happened. We we're living in a simulation yeah, I like, sex in Dollywood. I don't know cool. if like this interconnect connection is bad, but like we just got fiber optics out here maybe three months ago. You know, I was on DSL for like the 10 years before this or 15 years actually. But the funny thing is, and this is like, it's actually pathetic is when I was living in downtown Milwaukee, like I knew that eventually I was going to move to the country. So I didn't ever want to know what like high speed internet was like, you know? So I had dial up. So like from 1996 to 2005, I had dial up 56 K internet, you know, so I maintained a website and did all my shit, you know, like on this 56 K connection, because I knew that I was going to move to the country someday. And I just didn't want to be pissed off every single day. Like with, you know, knowing that like I was going to be on 56 K, but then when I moved out here and hooked up my internet, like DSL was an option. And I was, I couldn't even hook up my internet. Like I had to like hang up the phone. I was like, I got to like, drink for a while because i just realized i wasted 10 years of my life like on a shitty internet connection for no reason so why did you decide why did you know back then you were gonna go to the country what was going through your head it's tommy sunshine man <laughs> like, like in all of our rave journeys like you know we'd always a lot of our conversations ended up to like this idea of like and I don't know if it was his idea or my idea, but the idea was going to be that we we're going to have a cult someday. It was going to be in the country and like, we we're going to have this barn with a big sound system and like an ecstasy, like big block of ecstasy, like in the middle of the barn. So like people could just lick the ecstasy, like whatever they wanted, you know, and then we could just rave all the time. So it, it sounded like a really good plan, you know, like in 96 and seven or whatever, you know? So I just, it, I just, I wanted to, fulfill that dream <laughs> i guess you know what you have my full support but the reality is but the reality is is like i had a pretty dope warehouse in downtown milwaukee right underneath the freeway and when they redid the freeway i got eminent domain out of milwaukee so they i convinced them that a farm was equivalent to i just wanted land you know yeah. So I convinced them that a farm was equivalent to this warehouse and they bought me out and helped me pay for my farm. And here I am. Oh, shit. But then I got out here and it was like, it seemed like a super dope idea in 2005. But then sometime in 2006, I realized I don't know anybody out here. This is stupid. Like nobody's going to come out here to see me right. <laughs> anymore. So it wasn't a super good plan, but it was originally. So then I just started doing parties out here and then people came. So hey, wait, are, are they on your property? Huh? Are they on your property? We yeah, we'd have like one or two parties a year. They're, we just called them compound parties. Yeah. And we did we did that for well every year since I've been here, basically. We only had two parties a couple of years, but there's just been one party every year since. So and I got like a pretty nice sound system in the barn. The barn was like you know, back in the eighties, farming sucked. Yeah. So like the people that own this farm quit farming and they turned the barn into like a redneck party barn. So it's got a bar and an apartment and water and heat and everything, you know, yeah. and they would just like, they would just have parties up there, you know, like deer hunting parties. And I don't know what the fuck they would do. They would just have parties. So when I moved here, I kind of like, uh, reconfigured the barn. So it took down all the paps banners and all the deer hunting signs and, put in right now currently there's about i think there's 20 base bins in the barn but oh we God. don't normally run that many when we have parties out here that's wild <laughs> so it's cool you, i bet you've got a better sound system in your barn actually you were talking about derek and stuff before you probably got a better sound system in your barn than half the clubs in la <laughs> it's fun it's i mean it's, it's an okay sound system but it's like 
Richie Houghton used to do these jack parties back in the day. Yeah. And he had like Serwin Vega bass bins and like JBL time, whatever. Uh -huh. And so I just like, you know, Richie's God. So if he says that's a good sound system, that's what I'm going to get. And so I got the same stuff that he had, you know, it was all powered by Crest or whatever. And, and obviously it's not the dopest sound system anymore, but it, it's good for what we got here, you know? Yeah. The it's funny. It's funny you see, talking about this or whatever, because like the, the sound company that we used to use all the time in the nineties was this company called Badger and they went out of business last year, finally, and they had a big auction or whatever. So they had like a, a a bunch of shit there and i went and bought like a bunch of these front-loaded jbl like cabaret cabinets which are like from the 80s or whatever the really old sound speakers or whatever but they're the speakers that daft punk played on in 96 so like i still have the speaker now that like daft punk played on then so it's cool that is <laughs> that's a piece of history yeah. of midwest it's history like but, you know, I don't got any family and I don't really know anybody. So, realistically, it's all just going to get thrown in the fucking garbage eventually. So. Oh, fuck. That's dark. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I go, to, I, go to, I go to a lot of auctions out here just because it's something to do. And every fucking auction is the same thing. It's like some bachelor farmer who amassed this, like, giant, like, pile of shit and then he got killed in a farming accident and now it's all just getting auctioned off <laughs> and like every one of them i think the same thing i'm like this is what's gonna be happen to me man and it's like these people aren't gonna want rave flyers and techno records like i don't know what's gonna <laughs> happen to this shit <laughs> you a, uh, you're gonna need to get like a a wisconsin rave museum or something like a cultural uh no i, I, got, I got a note upstairs for my for whoever is like taking care of this it's like all right if I'm gone, yeah. you need to contact this person for the flyers, this person for the records. Like, make sure this shit goes to the right people. I don't care about the rest of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's the thing. Like, I was super, like, oh, I'm OCD in general, but I was, like, really meticulous from, well, 92 to 02. And, like, I have, like, pretty much basically two of, like, every flyer from every event that happened, you know, from then or that 10 year era or whatever, you know? So I got it. And I got it all like archived by like city and by date, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a, an amazing collection of flyers. You know, there's probably like 2000 mixtapes here, you know, and like all my records and stuff. Like there's a lot of really cool stuff, you know, that I kept for no reason. I kept because I thought it was part of history because I thought, well, because not only because I thought what we were doing was important because it is important, you know, yeah. but like when it comes time to like archive all this stuff, like beyond my house, like, I just don't want anyone to touch it, you know, <laughs> because I, I spent so much time like dealing with it. It's like, you know, there's like, I don't, you know, John Brown, Brown or whatever, like he was friends with Adam and stuff. Like there's a lot of these people that want to like deal with the mixtapes and the flyers. They want to scan everything and like dub all the sets and stuff like that. But it's like, man, it's so fucking organized right now. If I could give that to you, it's going to be a mess when I get it back, you know? That's so I don't know what to do. Yeah, I know. There was like that website, ravearchive.org. That was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, they were all the mixtapes. That was sick. Yeah. It, yeah, it's super good. You know, it's like, I mean, obviously being a promoter then, like everybody gave me a mixtape or eventually a CD or whatever, you know, and it's like, I got so many of them and they're, you know, it needs to be preserved, but I'm not the guy to do it. And well, I tell people, there's a lot of people that want to do it and they say they'll come here and do it, but then they never do. So. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's it's wild because like, uh, I mean, obviously that's like rave history and it's really funny because like what kids consider a rave now compared to like, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's like what the, f like, what are you fucking, you know, you know what, it's really funny. It's like, uh, it reminds me when I was like a teenager, there was like ravers and there were clubbers and the club kids would go to like the teen clubs um, and listen to fucking trance in, you know, like high energy, not high energy, like progressive house like sasha and digby you know in the 90s right, right. and and they were all like overwhelmingly like eastern european had spiky hair and had shiny shirts so they were like and they liked ghb a lot and <laughs> that was that's how it was i mean i remember when i was like, a teenager in chicago it's like all the suburban yeah. that's what they were into they used to go to like zero gravity and do ghb and listen to trance and and then, you know, we're in the city listening to like house and techno and drum and bass and hardcore in a fucking dirty warehouse. 
and you know doing everything but well i'm sure some people do too but it's like funny because it's like now i feel like they're for a lot of these people they like their first introduction to that shit is like not to like 18 or even 21 and then they're going to like this super corporate shit which is like the modern equivalent of just going to a club and listening to like the most formulated shit and there's not there's not like an alternative they're not like you know because i mean i started reading when i was like 15 like these there's kids like they're not they're not going to raise it when they're 15 they can't get in anywhere or if they're going somewhere right. over at 10 p.m it's like i remember we'd go show up to the party at midnight and then get out at eight nine in the morning you know it's fucking weird i always figured, I always figured that i was like super lucky because it was like when I, w- I was into like hair metal and stuff you know like in the 80s and then it transitioned somehow well not somehow i mean hair metal and punk rock at the same time so yeah. like i was i was a dork at college who had like giant Aquanet hair, you know, but I was wearing like a, uh, an army jacket with like GBH and dead Kennedys on and stuff. Like I made no sense. So I was like, I, I'm embarrassed, but somehow that transitioned into like, you know, Nitsa Reb and front two, four, two and new order and stuff like that. So, yeah. So when you're talking about juice bars and clubs, like, and stuff like that, like we were going to Medusa's, you know, yeah. so that was like actually legit juice, bars, yeah. you know, and it was like, yeah, just going there for the first time. And like, I, the first time we went there, we did ecstasy and that was in like 1987. So it was like just shortly after like he became illegal. So like the, the guy that we went there with was this guy, John, who's from Dallas, who worked at a bar down there where they like had E like on the bar, you know, when it was legal. So he had like all his great, yeah, there's like this giant fucking thing full of B, you know? So it's like, yeah, it was, it was not, it was the perfect way to actually start out all this, you know, it's just like on ecstasy at a place like Medusa's, you know, till like five in the morning, listening to like most amazing music with like this amazing crowd, you know, and it's like, holy fuck, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life, you know, I don't know how, but I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, they were, you know, the fucking, uh, the Chicago Reader just put out an article about Pumpkin Donuts, and they were talking about. I, did, I read that actually the other day. Yeah, and even like the New York Times, I, got, I get like their daily email. And they're like, oh, you should read this thing. I was like, yeah, I fucking read it. Like, I, I mean, I, I got to go to Pumpkin Donuts like at the end of when it was Pumpkin Donuts, you know. Uh, but it, it's like, you know, part of it was like it was a nexus for all these subcultures, and people would go there before and after Medusa's. And you know, you know, I've, I've like, I know, I was never old enough to go to Medusa's, uh, which is much to my chagrin. But you know, it's like that's the other thing too. It's like you, you read about Medusa's and you see these videos, and it's like you know when they had when it was like the all ages part. Like, there's kids you know dancing in like mitzvah Ebb and front 242 and what was you know like was it psycho bitch was djing there and whoever else and it's like they weren't playing you know like that shit wasn't getting played on the top 40 you know and no not at all <laughs> the good thing is like and it was like it was like a pretty pop, like vibrant teen subculture and it's like really weird now because i've like you know it's like the, i feel like the majority of, of teen kids they're like they have no desire like you know it's like uh, there's there's no way you could say that somebody like like Douglas McCarthy was like an industry plant like he wasn't created by some fucking record label you know what I'm saying and it's like and all these people like there's a lot of people that are popular now that like you know like Alana Del Rey or like a Billie Eilish or like you know there's like stuff like that um, and like yeah I'm sure there's tons of dudes I mean who I just don't know because they're not, not as popular or like Taylor Swift you know it's like total industry bullshit like concocted in a fucking lab to appeal to like these fucking kids. And meanwhile, like, it, I, I don't want to, like you people always complain, like these kids, they, they don't know what it, was, what it was like, but it's like the kids just like, they're not doing it the same or is like, they're not going as hard or, as it was back then. Like, I, I mean, it, it doesn't make, it's weird to me that like, how are they rebelling by like listening to some, some like 15 year old kid with face tattoos who eats Xanax talk about how he has a Rolex that his mom's dad, like, how is that, you know what I'm saying? Like. I don't fucking get it. I mean, now I'm, I'm going to stop this my old, the old man moment, but it's like, it's weird, you know? Cause it's like, it, it, it's like, the, what's the difference between like some fucking SoundCloud rapper with a face tattoo rapping about having a, a Lamborghini and like a dude that's on the top 40 radio station doing the same thing. It's the same right, right. It's just, it's just funny hearing you talk about going all in because like I graduated from college in December of 1988 and in December I met a, 
girl at Smart Bar who was a waitress there. She was in Thrill Kill Cult. And she gave, me her, she gave me her number. She's like, you know, we should hook up. We did. And then I graduated. I'm like, I'm moving to fucking Chicago. I'm going all in. You know, it's like Acid House was just going on. I got a job at the Alley. And I worked at the Reader. So it's like, you know, I had the two, the two coolest places you could probably work at, you know, in Chicago. And, like, she got me a gold card at Medusa's, you know. So I was, like, getting in free to Medusa's all the time. Getting in free to every Metro and Smart Bar show, you know. And living, like, a block and a half from Medusa's on, like, Sheffield, you know. And it was, like, it was fucking amazing, you know. <laughs> but it was just, like, I just got an engineering degree. I'm supposed to, like, start on my, you know, my the rest of my life, like, right now. But, oh, hell no. I'm moving to Chicago because Acid House is here. I've been waiting for this my whole fucking life, you know. Yeah. And it was, and it was, yeah, it just it went from, like, 1989 to what is this uh what well, went to 2002 till joe biden fucked it up you know fucking and joe then, biden <laughs> fucking <baby. laughs> and then uh then i did one of these with dustin and realized you know i still want to do this again so then we brought it back in 2016 so uh so that's like a thing it's like uh you know like you were saying that whole Lakeview, chef, like chef, you know, Medusa. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So the reason I brought that up is because you were talking about Punk and Donuts or whatever, yeah. and it's like I would, like I, like I lived a block and a half from the alley, so I'd walk to Clark and Belmont. I would get a, a coffee and a donut every morning, and then go to the alley and like sell shirts to like punk rockers, goth, and industrial kids all day, and then go to Medusa's at night or on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, you know. And so yeah, that place was like. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't part of like the, the hangout scene there. I was part of the uh, coffee with double sugar, double cream and two donuts scene, you know? <laughs> so I saw it, but I just, I wasn't part of that. You know, I was there for the donuts and the coffee. Yeah. So what I was saying, it's like, it's weird because it's like, it felt like there was, we're, now we're going to go back into bitching about subculture. Like there was so much subculture there and there was like so much infrastructure, right? Like you had, the alley where you'd buy, you know, there was like the alley in the 99th floor, that, all the shit that was over there on Clark and Belmont. And you could like get whatever clothes. I, I don't know what your Untitled opened, but I remember you'd go, you, I'd get fat pants and Untitled. And, you know, you'd go to Medusa's or back then, you know, but it's like you had like this, all this infrastructure. And now like the closest thing, like I know LA doesn't have anything like that, you know, New York, I mean, New York is gentrified to shit. There's, there's not like a fucking nexus of everything, right? And like the closest thing for, for what we're talking about, like it'd be like, oh, you gotta move to Berlin, but like, yeah, yeah. Right. but like even Berlin, like okay, you gotta go to Bergheim, and it's like okay, yeah, Bergheim is like, it's it's cool, but it's like, I mean, it's not it's not the same. It's like because it's it's so. Um, first of all, it's like it's not like there's not young kids who are getting exposed to to stuff and like getting exposed to culture. Like you know, what different? How different would it be if you know how old were you when you went, when you went to Medusa's? How old was how you know what was the first time? What age were you? For me? Yeah. I think the first time I went there, it would have been 80, either early 87 or late 87, early 88. So in my early 20s. Okay. Oh, God. You're... <laughs> <laughs> Don't do the fucking math, bro. I'm doing it. Jesus. You're 75 years old. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> you're running for president right now. You know, at least if you fought Joe Biden, it wouldn't be so, like, fucked up because you guys... Fuck Joe Biden! <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is what it's all about, though, when you're talking about that, you know, like, the alley, 99th floor, and Untitled, and all that shit, like, this here, this is, like, I just reached down behind me because, like, right, this is where all the, this is my acid house section, so this is, like, Fast Eddie and Tyree and all these guys would be dropping off white labels at Gramophone, oh, like, man. in 1988, you know, so, like, these are, like, 100 pressings of, like shit that they would be doing you know like acid house records that they'd be making like when acid house was like happening you know or when it was starting you know like at the birth of it you know yeah. and it was just, it, and at the time i was just i would go to you know i was making a, a i was also maybe i i heard I, I hung out with a guy who was maybe selling lsd and stuff at medusa so i had money so i would just go to gramophone every week you know and like get the you know whatever was on their wall you know the, all the new stuff or whatever was just like and i'm so stoked now because like well, we, we were talking about acid house before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like all these cool ass records and all these cool ass memories of like, I just feel like it's like the equivalent of like Manchester and Hacienda, you know? Right. Well, is that, that's the thing. It's like, you know, it's like. But it's cooler because I'm not English. <laughs> Fuck American. You can call every one of your British uh, Facebook friends. They're all just like deleting you right now. No but, way, man. 
I think well, Perk might be my only Facebook friend in England, so he likes me. I think uh, I think it's like super important, you know, like it, what it is with they had like the all ages nights, like the difference in getting exposed to that stuff when you're in your formative years, as opposed to like when you're like a fully formed. Like I feel like by the time you're 21, you're like pretty. You're not fully formed, but you're you're pretty. You're halfway formed. You know what I'm saying? And, I was not formed. <laughs> yeah, you were like, you were like a, uh, I mean, I was listening to like New Order and like. And, and you know, uh, dead or alive, you know, and, and the cult and Sisters of Mercy, you know, all that shit, you know, the stuff that they were playing like at clubs, like in '87 or whatever, you know, like that was dance music or whatever. So it's like going to Medusa's the first time, and they had like uh, house music on the second floor when it wasn't a video bar or video room or whatever. So it's like all those guys were playing like original house music and stuff, you know, and it was just like holy shit you know like what is this and then all the freaks that are there you know doing their performance art and stuff it was mind-blowing to be honest yeah well yeah so that's the thing is like i'm saying it's like it sucks that there's nothing right right there's, there's no equivalency now no, there's nothing, nothing even like remotely close because you know like you, you can, know, like you can, you can investigate it all on the internet beforehand so there's like no surprises there's nothing nothing gonna freak you out necessarily and it's like nothing new you know it's like it's like you're you, you don't experience it just like in the raw, you know? Yeah. Nothing I don't think anything's shocking anymore. Like how can you even be like I think the most shocking thing you could do is wear a fucking like at least for in my circles is like you know, it's like wearing a fucking MAGA hat, which I wouldn't do. <laughs> but it's like that's not even shocking. It's cause it's like you know, if you do that, you just like you're being fucking square. Like I I don't wanna right. keep, you know, it's like I'm like being like my I'm gonna be like not my dad. My dad isn't isn't a fucking Republican. But you know, it's like it's like not to to be like edgy. It's like you just be <laughs> you. You want to be square. <laughs> ironic, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't know. Like it, it, I don't know, it's weird. It's weird. Like there's no, nothing. Yeah, you know, like you said, nothing is shocking. Nothing, there's no secrets because the internet it, like shows everything. There's nothing shocking. Uh, you know, like I remember I had friends who were street punks. Who, you know, who'd wear swastikas to, like just to pick to, to to like pick fights with people. So somebody like, are you a Nazi? Like, no, you want to fight me. And they weren't, you know, they were not, they were just doing it because they're fucking, they're, tr they're trying to be shocking. Or like, even like, then like Marilyn Manson, he had his like a, a lightning bolt thing, which is, I think it was like a logo for the National Front or something in England. And that's like a fucking, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and like, but it's like, like, I remember, you know, when I was in Marilyn Manson, I was like, that's so shocking. But if you did that shit now, like, that's not shocking at all. Like, none of that stuff is, it's all like, can we be, can we be surprised? Nothing's surprising. Because we, like, you know, you can Google the worst shit in the fucking world and see it. So you're not even scared. Well, I remember one of the first times I went to Medusa is like from the first floor was the main room. And then the, the third floor was like the video room and they had a live room up there too. But like, or no, I guess it was the second floor. And, but the in hallway between the two, there was like uh, two or four windows. I think it was four. It was a DJ boost. I, anyway, there was performance art going on. And so it's like one of those windows, the very first, one of the first times I was there, there was a, uh, a chick in a tub of baked beans sticking hot dogs inside of her, you know? So, like, that was definitely shocking. <laughs> you know? So, like, I don't even know if I could find that on the internet now. Yeah, may maybe maybe I'm just, like, old and not shocked anymore. Because, you know what, I I'm, like, saying this stuff, but then I always remember... No, no, but that was, that, was, that was 1988 shocking. Like, that shit's not going on anymore, you know? Well, I mean, that, you couldn't do that stuff in a legal venue anyway. Like, Actually, what you should be saying is all this stuff and more happens at Soft Leather... Well, see, I was, I was going to get into that because there's, there's two things that made me realize that maybe because I, you know, I live in a bubble, you know, and it's like you, you're kind of in, you're in a bubble, but you're also like get to see outside the bubble because you live in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. I'm in fucking LA, you know, so I'm in like a bubble and a bubble and a bubble. But like, I remember when I was in Europe or last summer and I was like taking trains everywhere and like walking through like these small towns to like do um, switch over trains. Like as before I had green hair, I just, but it's like, I don't think I look fucking weird, you know? Uh, but apparently I fucking do to like the like a normal person and so like I was getting stares and like people were like pointing at me and I was like what the fuck and I felt like self-conscious for the first time in a while and then again you know like people come to self other they see stuff like to me none of it's shocking I remember what, what gave me the some some ideas like I went to like I was booked to play some fetish party like three four years ago and we were watching this guy fuck um fuck a trans girl who was fucking another girl and we're watching it hey, wait, hold on a second mm -hmm. okay i got it yeah so it was like you know dun, dun, into you know 
Dun, dun, dun. It's like centipede, but with penises. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm, I'm, we're not watching it. I'm like, you know, having a little sip of whatever drink. And I had two of my friends next to me. And I was like, well, I'm not even, I'm not even shocked anymore. Like, this, isn't, this is like whatever. It's like a Saturday night. Like, who cares? Like, it's not weird. You know, and it's like maybe I'm desensitized. You know? <laughs> but like, <laughs> like part of people come to my parties with it. They, you know, they, they're like, oh, my God, this stuff is happening here. And right. Like I'm see it. I'm like so. You know, like I said, I'm desensitized. I've seen it. I mean, I've been seeing it. You know, I remember like the first time I went to one of your parties, and I walked in and I saw like the inverted pentagrams, and I was like, oh, fuck, it's sick. You know, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, and, but like that shit. Like you know, like now it's like partially because of like all these like corny brands. Right, right, right. Everyone's you know, like, fucking co-opted it and made it corporate. Yeah, like they, they'll they'll have like an inverted pentagram or like Luc- this Lucifer sigil, and it'll be like Disney goth or like. <laughs> I'm, I hate my parents and it's worn by like a 30 year old and it's like <laughs> you know like it, it's like it's like an inverted pentagram and then like Jack Skellington from Nightmare Before Christmas and it's like this isn't even this is not shocking like it's so like normalized right, and, right, right. and corny and it's like yeah I mean I don't even like being shocking like what's the what's the point where nothing, nothing's shocking anymore I think it's I mean it's weird you know what I'm saying no I, I totally I, I feel that and yeah, it, it, the internet's ruined everything. Yeah. So <laughs> someone asked about your time in the New Beat Warriors. That, that's not for me. I don't know who the fuck is. What this was guy, that? This guy named Rob, isn't it? Yeah, Robert Murphy, some <laughs> Irish name. <laughs> He's a guy that lived across like the the hall from me, or the and the alley. He, we lived next to each other in in 1988 in Chicago, and he was my. We would go to Medusa's a lot. Oh, that's the take, story. Take Wait, LSD. You're not a newbie warrior anymore. You know that shit's oh, back. You know, I'm newbie. always newbie warrior. You newbie. know, because they would they would play like newbie, like in, what is that, like 110 BPM? It's like really slow. So you they follow up like Palehead or like something, you know, like super like aggressive or whatever with like a, a Lords of Acid song, like going really slow at Medusa's, you know. And it's just like when you're on LSD, like that, those kind of moments are really fucking cool, you know? So like me and me and that guy decided we are newbie warriors and we're going to take the cause into the future. All right. <laughs> you, have, you, have any, you still have any newbie records? Do I what? You still have any newbie records? Are you, are the whole fucking wall of them? I do actually. <laughs> I don't know. We're, hold on a second. Keep talking. Yeah. You should, uh, that's something that would be cool. I actually had my, my buddy Aaron Stigberg record a newbie mix for me, like, God, in, like, 2004. Yeah, I got this, like, series of records. They're called Serious Beats. Oh, sick. They're, all, they're all newbie records, you know, and all these, like, Lords of Acid. And, yeah, they're, they're, like, at Gramophone, they would always come out with, like, newbie. They, there was a lot of, like, uh, 12 inches on, like, ZYX and, like, you know, these labels or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But then they would always come out with these, like, double LPs where they'd put all the, rec- all the songs, like, on, on one record. Oh, yeah. See, that's what he would say. Newbie, take four. Oh, man, that's sick. You should yeah. you know what you should do? If you do a live stream, you should do an all new beat set. You know, I did, like, what was it? Two New Year's ago, like, me and my, my friend Steve Centrific, we threw, he threw a party. He was doing a party, a New Year's party in Minneapolis, you know, and he asked me to be part of it. And I never, ever DJ at my own parties or whatever, but I always put my name on the flyer, you know, just to, to, help, my, to help my... Uh, Get some chicks. My resume. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, ch- and, ch- and chicks love it too. But like, but, but like the guy who was doing this guy Neil, who was doing the second room at that party, I don't know. How he the concept got changed, and I don't know how it got changed. But he wanted everybody that was spinning in that room yeah. to like spin music from a club in an era, yeah. and like so I just picked Medusa's 1988, and it was like it was probably the best set of my fucking entire life, you know, because it was like, I got to play all these records I'd been listening to for 30 years, you know, and I'll play like skinny puppy and ministry and, and pale head and new order and Karen Finley, you know, and like all these records that I'd like and, and mix them. Actually, I wasn't going to mix them at first. I was just going to like fade in and out of each of them. But then I was like, you know what? These people are into it. I'll just try to mix all these, you know, and it, it's on sound. It's like one of like two sets that I have on SoundCloud. <laughs> You know, so anyway, what you're what you're saying is like I I have actually gotten to play a lot of those records recently, and it was it was dope. You know, it was cool. People dug it. You know, yeah, no, they shit. It's like crazy. It's like popular. It's it's funny because it's like cyclical. Like every twenty years, it's like newbie came back during the electric clash era, and now oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. What I'm calling what's happening now is like electric clash two point oh, but without the cheesy stuff. 
And when I was in Berlin last summer, I went to this place, Urban Spree, on like a Sunday. And me and my buddy, Saren, were, were like on a head full of mushrooms. And, and they, were, they were just, it was like eight hours of newbie. And I was like, this is fucking sick. And it was like packed full of like, everyone's wearing black. It was like stereotypical, like Berlin, uh, you know? And I was like, this is the fucking coolest shit. Uh, it might have been the mushroom, but you know, it's, it's like, that's, that's, that's like a cool thing. Like, I don't think you can go anywhere in America, maybe New York somewhere. And like in the middle of the day, like go, go to like a day party. It's like a beer garden. And it was like, just listen to newbie. Uh, and a lot yes, of stuff- it, it's, it's so dope. Cause it's just like, you know, it's all like these, these like ridiculous samples, vocal samples, and like a lot of these Hoover sounds. And then just like this, like slow driving kick, you know, that like, it doesn't take a lot of energy to like be into it or whatever, you know, but you could just like, you could, you could listen to it. You could listen to it for eight hours and not wear yourself out. Yeah. No, it's, it's cool. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Rachel Lynn asked if further's happening. Yeah, it's happening in September unless. Um, totally. Like, why wouldn't it happen? Well, if they, if they don't let you. I've been breaking the law since fucking 1992. Well, you know what? If I think by the time September hits, I'm like well over my 14 day quarantine. So I'm going to, I'm going to come out and, <laughs> you know it's like we, you know like legitimately we have like four options here you know we, we continue to do like the the legal party you know that we have always done yeah. but they do have like ordinances up there like large gathering ordinances so we could do it like under the threshold which we wouldn't need to get permits you know and yeah. then i have another venue option which is also about a thousand people. And then there's a the last option would be here at the compound, you know, which would be like 500 people, you know, it's going to fucking happen whether it's 500 people or 2000 people. So. And, and how many porta potties? Six. By the bathroom. If I bring you a, uh, if I bring you a DJ writer, <laughs> you know, we're all getting old enough that realistically soon we're going to be wearing colostomy bags. So I'm going to save about $7,000 on porta potties. <laughs> we're all going to hand out the pants at the, at the gate. You know, and at, at further in like 2001, like Dormouse and all those attic people, they just brought diapers. And I'm not, exact, I'm not exactly sure if they're shitting and pissing themselves, but they had, definitely had diapers on and that could be a solution. You know what? The trend for 2020 is diaper goth. Hashtag diaper goth. <laughs> I'm selling it. I'm going to start selling merch. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've already gone through that, actually. <laughs> well, there was a fucking, <laughs> there was some trend that lasted like three months where people were girls wearing bonnets. And, uh, <laughs> Wait, did you say bonnets? <laughs> so it's like, you're, you're totally up on that because you're in Amish country. Right? I was just going to say, you like, you, you found my kink, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah <but> <laughs> And then, you know, they're like wearing diapers and bonnets. I don't I made up that diapers part. But <laughs> I feel like only babies wear bonnets or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's weird out here, you know, because it's like, I don't even know if I should be talking about this, but I've had a bunch of shots. It's okay. But it's like uh, the Amish, you know, they, every family has like 14 kids, you know, and like they, they intermarry and stuff. So there's this like, there's this like big problem of like inbreeding or whatever. So it's like when you drive down the roads here, there's like if, thing, same thing. Huh? It's like the rave scene. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> right, 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 right. But no, but 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 so they'll they'll have like red flags out by the mailbox or whatever. And that means that they're looking for someone to have sex with a daughter there. So cause they want like jeans like outside of they want English jeans outside of the Amish community, you know? Oh shit. And you can get paid for that. Oh. It's not as much as you think, so calm down. And I don't even know, like I've heard, and I swear to God, I've heard. I haven't. I don't know, but yeah, it's weird. I, I kind of like. I don't want to go into this story anymore. You gotta. You can't leave me hanging. I want to hear about how you impregnated an Amish girl for fifty bucks. Oh, I, 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 I got cheese kids. I haven't. But when I was talking about those guys doing my roof before, yeah. like they, one of the mornings that I picked up those guy, the one guy, like he asked me if I could take his sisters, give them a ride to school. And they were like, you know, 17-ish at the time or whatever. And so, like, I, you know, cataloged in the back of my mind that, like, in a few years, like, they were really, oh, my point was, is they smelled nice and they were really cute, you know? Like, they were good German. What are you, Joe Biden? (laughs) No, no, they were in my van. Like, I gave them a ride to school. And I was like, these are, these are, like, future hot Amish chicks, you know? Oh, my God. (laughs) 
but, but but then actually I went on a vegetable tour of one of their farms and I saw one of those girls like seven years later uh-huh. and she went full Amish. So yeah, I didn't miss anything. They don't age well? Or I, I did. Can, can you edit some of this shit out? No. no. Said, <laughs> but anyway, so it's like you can have sex with these Amish women, daughters, girls, wives, and but mm-hmm. like you have sex with them and there's a sheet covering them. You know, there's just a hole where the, the sex happens. Fuck off. <laughs> and and but and then the, the dad is in the room, you know. No. So it's like, there's no there's no like it's not it's just like I guess like cattle breeding or whatever. And I don't mean that to sound bad, but it's just like you know they have a serious problem, you know, because it's all inbreeding. They're marrying each other, so they need this. And then if it's like if it's a male, you get paid five hundred dollars, and if it's a female, you don't get paid as much. Oh wow! You get five hundred bucks if you land a boy, huh? Yeah, I guess it's just paid more and the weird thing is is there's a couple there's several guys out here that like drive the amish around you know give them rides places so there's a lot lot of amish kids that look like these guys (laughs) dude i'm good wait i'm gonna go in summer up there that's like that's my kink i'm i'm in a breeding i'm just gonna get a bunch of amish girls dude you can make three grand in the summer if you're (laughs) i got a bag of viagra pills from from my fucking fucking days i'm fucking I got a bottle of tequila, a <laughs> bag of fucking Viagra. Run a run a train and make six grand. Yeah, I I could I could if I I could if I could somehow do it so I can have them all in one house in like different rooms because you know it's like so you know you don't want a bunch of dads hanging out it's like too much you know it's like too much of an audience I can do if like one person's watching that's fine but like if it's like a room full of dads it might kill my my performance. Uh, but like you know, if you're like, hey, like a, a whole house, it's like, okay, I'm gonna come in. I got, I got my pillow bag. I'm just gonna shoot my shot with all of these, and you know, collect. Like, come on. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll actually appreciate this being a fetish guy. Like, I, I do know a guy that was, was part of this service or whatever. And I was like, I, I asked him, I was like, how do you have sex in front of like this a dad, you know, with his daughter or whatever? That's just weird. He's like, no, no. If you slip him a twenty, he'll spank you while you're. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not fucking sure if he's kidding or not, but I think. Uh-huh. He was. Well, you know, you know, I could do it as, as long as if the dad's in there, he's just got to make himself useful and like hold up the poppers bottle for me. So I'm just like, oh. <laughs> like, like you know, <laughs> hold it up. Or, no, like right, like all right, all right, cool, all right, all right, good. Thanks for being useful, dad. Just don't call it the just don't call it the poppers bottle. Call it the male bottle. It like this guarantees male sperm. Yeah, this is the. It's gonna. Well, he'll, he'll be he'll be he'll be down with it. It's gonna increase my fertility. Uh, it'll increase my load volume. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I can get like a scientific grant. You know, maybe like, like okay, you can measure the, like, okay, this, this man in, in, you know, inhaled poppers before copulating with this Amish woman. And nine times out of 10, he had a boy. So there's like a correlation between doing poppers. And- as long as we're talking about Amish, like the, this is fucked up. But like, I, I heard they had like an Amish phone book, but they don't have phones, you know? So like I went to there was this there's this Amish store like about well, five miles from me and I went to get one of these Amish phone books or whatever to see what it was about. So like I parked my car on the road, walk up the driveway because they had like a general store below this house, you know. And I'm thinking I'll just walk in there and get one of these and like I just want to see who's all in this Amish community around here. I'm walking up the fucking driveway. There's this giant blood stain in the middle of the driveway that was fresh, and I'm just like, what the fuck happened here? I walk into the Amish store and they got like two like plastic eight foot tables sitting next to, to each other with a fucking pig on it. And they're like hacking away at this pig. And they're like, how you doing? You know, and they're just like, you want some sausage? And I'm just like, Oh my fucking God. Like I just entered deliverance. I'm like, no, no, I'm just here for like one of these directories. And I bought one and I brought it home and I'm looking at it, you know, just to see the names and like all the people that live around me or whatever. And then I realized that it actually wasn't like, it was all hand done and like drawn with like maps and stuff and like in a typewriter, you know, and then, but it talked about like who was married to who and which family they were from. Oh, and, then sure. I, and then I realized it wasn't actually like a directory. It was kind of like a, a breeding catalog, you know? So it's like, oh, if I marry so-and-so's daughter, like I won't be in this gene pool. It, it was fucked up. So that's why they have the red flags. You can either buy the directory or get a red flag. Okay, so I'm gonna buy the directory. Um, you know, like some people go and like work on a, like an oil rig or like the oil fields for like three months or like a, a crab ship or whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna go 
and I'm going to live in your brave barn for three months <laughs> and just earn my money for the year and play in the Amish. It's a good plan. I think it's, I think it's solid. Uh, you know who, who jumped in is, is Phantom45 jumped in the chat. I love that guy, man. Do you, do you find, is he a friend of yours on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure how you found this stupid video we're doing, doing that. Right, because there's no meme involved with what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure why he's even bothering with this. Yeah, but like, true, yeah. Literally, every time I lost that log on Facebook, like the first eight posts are by him. Yeah. I think and, every one, and every one of them makes piss my pants, and every one of them makes me think, how does this guy have any fucking friends? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear like a, a, a little fucking cool trivia thing? Is uh, <clears throat> I think when I was like sixteen. Wait, I, did, he, did he ask a question? No, he just he just said these two because he hates both of us. Oh, um, he does. He yeah. loves me. What is he talking about? No, I'm joking. He doesn't hate us. He hates me. He, he likes you. <laughs> I think actually he played. You know, everybody further '96. Everybody talks about Daft Punk, but yeah. only because Daft Punk is cool now. You know, they weren't cool then. Yeah. And everybody that was like had drugs and stayed around for Sunday talks about Scott Kiss because that was probably like one of the most dope sets like that's never happened in the history of rave. But the fact of the matter is, is like the best set of the weekend was Phantom 45. And I think he played right before Daft Punk on Saturday night. Uh -huh. And it was like, most of those kids weren't into drum and bass and stuff, but they knew that like Brian was like one of our own, you know, and he was like sharing the stage with like all these international headliners or whatever. And like, it was fucking amazing, you know, just because like, this is one of our dudes, you know, and he's like killing it, you know? So yeah, I got a, spe I got a special spot for that guy. Cause that set was like amazing. You know, what's fucking wild. <clears throat> you just mentioned what I was going to say is that when I was like 16 or whatever, <clears throat> I forgot what year that, uh, this is book generation I see by Simon Reynolds was yeah, like, yeah. My I'm in it. And yeah, and but both of you guys are mentioning, he's like, he mentions like going even further and seeing Daft Punk performing, seeing Phantom 45. And I was like, you know, like that, that book, I think it like changed my life because it made me realize, like I wasn't in a history at all before I found that book, but I, you know, I was obviously in a raving and I found that book and it made me understand how history wasn't, because you know, the way the teacher in history in school is, it's like, this happened. And then 15 years later, this happened. And then 15 years later, this happened. It's so fucking funny that you mentioned this because like, you know, I threw a bunch of parties with David Prince or whatever. And you know David, right? Uh, I don't know. He did, he did the Reactor magazine back in the 90s. Yeah, I, I don't know personally. I know, I, know about the, I, know, I know the name, but I don't know personally. Oh, okay. So he ended up like writing for like, you know, Billboard and Rolling Stone or whatever. And he wrote like Timothy Leary's last book. You know, like he's a dope writer. But like he gave me this piece of advice like at one point. And he was just like, and it, and it resonated with me because like everything I do, it, not everything, but a lot of what I do is based off of like the 60s, you know, and the acid tests, you know. And the only reason I know about that shit isn't because I'm that old enough. It's because it's like it was part of history. It was, it's like documented or whatever. So he was like, you know, it's like it, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that it's in relevant sources so that like in 2030 or 2050, when they're researching the rave scene, like your name comes up, you know? So yeah. when you mentioned Simon Reynolds there in Generation Ecstasy, like he also wrote like uh, the same article for the New York Times, you know? So it's like he came to further that year. And it's like my goal, like in all the, not my goal, but like one of the main things, or one of the things I was focused on then in the 90s was making sure that like, the things I was doing, like if they were getting covered, that they would get covered into like relevant sources, you know? So like Simon Reynolds wrote this article for the New York Times and like whenever you research anything, like that's one of your go-to sources, you know? Yeah. Same with like the Chicago Tribune and like, uh, uh, what's his name? Jim Derogatis or whatever, you know? It's like, yeah. he's a rock writer, you know? It's like, or what's his name that wrote like the, the Marilyn Manson biog biography? Like, I can't remember his name right now, but like, you know, he, he covered further one of those years and put it in like relevant sources. So yeah, that, what you're saying like totally resonates with me because that was kind of like always in the back of my mind that like, if you're going to fucking make an effort to like make sure you're getting put somewhere, it puts somewhere that's uh, going to be looked at, you know, like in, <laughs> in the future, whatever, you know? Yeah. So no matter how much stupid shit I can do, it's going to at least be like, well, now we got Wikipedia that's fucked it all up. Yeah. Do you have a Wikipedia article? We did, but they took it down or they just, they, 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 I don't know who even started it. Like, I don't know how that shit works. I'm not smart like that, 
but it was getting updated regularly and it was kind of pissing me off because it had like some stuff in there that I didn't want to be in there, you know? Huh. And then eventually Wikipedia just said like, it wasn't real. It just got put in the yeah. radar. Yeah. You know, I had one and then like after all the health got stuff happened, like that was like more stuff to add in there. But I think I had so many like internet trolls that I got taken off. So I'm no longer. Right. That's what happened with me. That happened that with our thing is like these trolls would go on there and put like this stupid shit on there, which, you know, like, talking about stuff that like may or may not have happened or you know may or may not have been relevant but it just i i don't know probably just pissed someone off yeah i mean that's what happens i mean i'm sure you've pissed i mean yeah i know you <laughs> I know for a fact you've got you pissed a lot of people off uh, but i mean whatever you know what are you gonna do yeah i don't really want to piss people off i want everyone to like me do you <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course yeah, is that why you use all the satanic imagery that's not something that people you know it's like i don't know no, I don't, it's like okay think think when did you start going to parties 90 i was 15 97, 97? Okay, so that's a that's a little later but like it's like you know it's like when it all started it was all just break beats and happy shit you know or whatever and it was like I'm in Milwaukee, which is all industrial and like a blue collar city. And like, that's where metal fest happened, like all this dark stuff, you know? And that just sort of resonated with me more. And it was like, you got 20 promoters from Chicago that are like pushing plur, you know, all this like community and togetherness and stuff. Like if it wasn't necessarily a marketing plan, but it was like a marketing idea that's like, well, hell, if we permission push Satan, like that's different than everybody else you yeah. know like is this gonna be cool and fuck if it wasn't cool you know <laughs> it's like yeah. everybody from Milwaukee was like hell yeah like this is a rave symbol you know and it just sort of gave us an identity that was different than Minneapolis and St. Louis and Chicago you know so it was it was uh and then once and then once people like gravitate towards that it's hard to just like let it go you know yeah yeah, I mean, that's it's when you're doing a lot of drugs, like any idea that's a bad idea seems good. Yeah. <laughs> advocate for drug use. <laughs> right, right. So you're just like, wait, wait, you want me to make the devil cool? I'm down. Like, I'm into that. You son of a bitch, I'm in. It worked. It fucking worked. <laughs> right. Sure. Oh, I, you know, it's not even my fault. I blame all these people for, like, allowing me to do it, you know? Yeah. Too many enablers. It, exactly. That's the word. Enablers. I'm always surprised when people think my, my terrible ideas are good ideas. I mean, like, <laughs> like I'm a fucking idiot right now, and uh, I'm, like, surprised at, like, the shit that I throw out there and then sticks. I'm like, what? Like, like the health got thing. Like, that was a fucking gag, you know? Right. And, uh, I mean, whatever. You know, thank God. Thank, you know? It's, funny, it's funny you're even talking about that because I was just talking about this tonight with Jody. It's just, like, uh, the drop ace logo you know it was never meant to be a logo and it was just like a, a dumb idea it was on a flyer and i told like my partner at the time who wanted to use it for something else that he couldn't use it because it was going to be my record label logo you know and then all so then i like was committed to like using it as a record label logo so i did and now there's like you know i got like 200 pictures of, of people that have that tattooed on them for the rest of their fucking life you know and it, it's just like something that was like not serious that was just accidental you know and yeah it's just weird <laughs> yeah well, you, how many sub labels were there because i was trying i was like remembering that like uh you because you mentioned if and then i was like i know i i have played for you right but then he put a record out as beverly hills 808303 on one on yeah i think he did, he did three of them i think yeah they're that's, fucking amazing that's fucking i mean the, the connections is, is like so wild because it's like i feel like a lot of people don't even know. Like, I, have, I know he got popular when he did that mix-up in the hay. And now, like, I th he's, like, the, the whole, like, Dutch thing is getting popular again, which is cool, because I those guys, I like all the stuff they make. But it's, like, wild how, like, see, like, how interconnected everybody is. That's why it's, like, cool to talk to and, and, it was, and it was all just totally accidental, because, like, this is, like, pre-internet, you know? So it's, like, I'm not even sure, like, I think, like, I had one of uh, the... Actually, I think what happened was, do you know the Unimobius? Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Right. So so that guy who was like, Guy is his name. He was like half a Unimobius. Guy, Guy Tavares, whatever his name is. Huh? Guy Tavares. 
Yeah, yeah. So you know him. Yeah. He, he, he just ended up at a hostel in Milwaukee and was a fan of like Drop Bass Network and Actually. called like the fucking number that was on the record. And was like, hey, this is Guy from Unit Mobius, you know? And it's like, I'm like buying these records, you know? I was like, holy shit, you should come out. We'll go out to dinner, you know? Yeah. So he like came over to our house, hung out. Next thing you know, we're like, we're getting like demos from IF, you know? And it's like, all of a sudden, like we're down with the hag, you know? And it's like, I, you know, like, right... Can you see this finger? Yeah. 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 So like, these are all records that, that IF sent me. You know, there's like 75 records there. You know, it's like if you go on Discogs, those records are worth a lot of money. But it's just like he just gave them all to me, you know, because he wanted to do a record on Drop Ace Network. You know, and they did that like documentary a while ago. And it's just like, like, I fucking worship that guy, you know. And he's like talking about like Drop Ace Network in Milwaukee in the Midwest, you know, it's like as a, as a as a cool thing, you know. And I'm just like, holy shit, you know, <laughs> this is yeah. weird, you know. And it's like... Uh, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine, like, how funny, like, these guys in Europe are like, oh, yeah, like, Milwaukee is, like, super cool. You have to go there. They have this label called Drop Bass, and they do the hottest ass of the Midwest hot cops. And then you go there, and all you guys is, like, fucking cheese curds. <laughs> and cold beer. You, you were talking about going to Europe before, and I, I think it was in, like, 2004, maybe. We went to Europe for a month, and we were, like, we went to, you know, like, Ireland and UK and in Belgium and all these places and stuff like that. And we're walking around in, 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 I forget if it was in, I think it was in the Netherlands. We're walking around, we're wearing drop A shirts, you know, like dudes are coming out, you know, a couple people came up to us. It's like, I love that record label. You know, it's like, no you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, how they know, like the record label is like, yeah, I'm the guy who runs You know, I didn't want to bring, say that or whatever, you know, but it's just, it was just, it's cool. Like we were big in Scandinavia at the time, I guess. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. So yeah, IF is awesome, you know, and he, he tried to come here for further in 95 and he got to customs and didn't get in. So then he just went record shopping in, in Chicago and wasn't mad at all. And then he came back and he played in further in 2001, I think. Yeah. yeah. But now he's got one of these things where it's, I, I talk to him every year, but he's got like a, a thing where he just doesn't want to fly more than three hours or he can't, you know? Uh -huh. So he can never come back to America. And plus, most of those people over there hate Trump. So they're just like, they didn't want to fucking deal with it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's even harder with him, like, for people to come over now. I mean, we'll oh, see. Oh, that right now would be impossible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wonder how this shit's going to be after this corona stuff lifts up, like, how the travel is going to be. I know, like, I, I, had a, I was going to go on tour. I would have left in, like, a week to go to Europe. But, like, how it's going to be after is going to be fucking weird. You know? It's like a... I mean, you know, it's like when you, after this is over, people have to like rebuild their own little scene. Like, you know, it's like I can, I, if someone said tomorrow that the, the quarantine is up, I could throw a party. But like for like all these clubs and all this infrastructure. We're, we're, throwing, a, we're throwing a party next week and quarantine be damned. So <laughs> why don't you tell me I would have bought a plane ticket. I'm bored to fucking tears. <laughs> Especially if I can get a little bit of Amish in on my way, uh, you know. They make, they make a little fucking coin on the side. A business trip. They'd be like, hey, why are you flying in Milwaukee? <laughs> there is an IRS deduction, I believe. I don't know. Yeah. I forgot what number it is. I came here for apple butter, <laughs> peanut brittle, and getting on the butter, butter burgers and pregnancy. Yeah. Oh, God. Butter burgers. Butter burgers and pregnancy. That, you know what? That, that's it. That should be it. That's the end of, that's the, end of the, the conversation. That's, <laughs> butter burgers. We've been talking for like two and a half hours. This is insane. Uh, that was good. Shit. Oh, it is 12 o'clock. Yeah. It's not good, bro. Yeah, you got to wake up you soon. You said one hour, and you said this was going to be recorded, and you'll edit out any stupid shit I say. You fucking lied to me twice. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah, I'm a liar. You know, like Henry Rollins says, I'm a liar. <laughs> I don't know. Do we like Henry Rollins? Uh, well, he doesn't He doesn't like techno, right? He doesn't like yeah, he hates, That's what I mean. He hates techno. <laughs> and it's like, same thing with, like, what's his name from Big Black? Steve yeah. Albini. Like, I, fucking, I just fucking worship that guy. Like, I, and then all of a sudden, like, it's like, he's like super, like, thinks electronic music is the stupidest thing ever. You know, I was like, dude, like, you can't say that. Dude. Uh, you know, I always said that I would like to hang out with Steve Albini and I feel like he would like me uh, because we're both like bitter pieces of shit. But I think he's, since he's older than me, he's more bitter. So like, I'm, you know, it's like, I'm not as jaded and, you know, he probably think I'm a fucking moron, which, you know, he's right. I'm a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, maybe like, a, you know, if you got to meet, if you got to hang out with these guys, maybe they think you're funny or something. I don't know. 
but he does have that songs about fucking album and that would totally relate so like you guys would bond was that big black or was that shellac that was big black yeah he was part of that though right yeah yeah he was part of both of them yeah yeah, yeah. all right well you tried to call me out here or something i don't know i'm not trying to call you i know you know more than i do are you kidding me <laughs> I've never seen Black actually, so I don't know. I think I was living in Chicago. I think they had like a show at the Empty Ball, and I was like, I'm not gonna try to do that, you know. I, I think didn't he have like a? I think he had a recording studio or something over on Broadway. So when I was living there, I believe that was his. I walked past there like often. One because there was a lot of transvestites or whatever they. Now they're transsexual. Now it's called transsexual. I know. Damn it! I was thinking Rocky Horror. Yeah, in the nineties, in the nineties, you could say transsexual. Oh, in the nineties, they were. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah so there was a lot of that and it was just like that whole scene on broadway was awesome and then there was that studio down there. i think it was on broadway or maybe it was halstead one of those two yeah but al jorgensen hung out there a lot and i thought if i could just see al jorgensen sometime that would make my life complete uncle al <laughs> i was i was friends with his daughter on facebook um, oh really yeah and it was really funny because i went into my facebook pokes like some someone poked me i don't know if you're familiar with this 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 ability you can do on Facebook, you can poke somebody. And it used to be, I, used I was to, just talking about someone that I was just talking to someone about that yesterday. And they were like, I think that means they want to have sex with you. And I was like, I, I got like two or three girlfriends out of, I just like poke him. Cause I was like, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm not really good at pickup lines. And so I poke him and I got like, I got, I dated a couple of girls off that. It worked. <laughs> cool. so like, someone poked me and I was like, whoa, pokes. I forgot about this. And I looked in, it's like, Oh, you know, poke back. And at the bottom was Al Jurgensen's daughter. And she had poked me like poked you six years ago. And I was like, holy shit, I wonder what she's up to. Uh, but yeah, it's like funny because now like... Uh, Next thing you know, you got a heroin addiction. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but like I, I haven't gotten the chance to meet Uncle Al. And like I think I'm like scared because I'm like, a, you know, it's like don't meet your idols. And, and I'm like worried that he'll do something. Because it's like, you know, like I've like befriended people who I thought was like really cool when I was a teenager. And then I'm like, find out. They do something stupid. I'm like, oh, this dude sucks, and it ruins my ability to enjoy anything right. uh, that they have to do with. So I'm like, you know, I've been like in the same building as him a couple times. Like, you know, like I think my buddy's three teeth were on tour with with ministry in Europe, and I was like tagging along when I was like hop, we were like hopping back and forth, and I got to meet like the dudes in the band, but I never got to meet Uncle Al because he's like so old and doesn't do anything anymore. In fact, the last time I saw him, he spent half the set sitting down. <laughs> it's funny, funny because when you, when you talk about him like when I, when I was dating that girl from Thrill Kill Cult like I went to like a, a July 4th picnic and it was at what's the guy's name that's a singer Frankie or the main guy or Frank yeah, or, yeah. yeah so he was having a picnic at they were having a picnic and like I think it was at his place or maybe it was at one of the other girls places so like you know I got to meet him and like all the guys from Thrill Kill Cult some of the other people from Wax Tracks and like Cynthia Plastercaster like and all these people were there and I was like this is fucking awesome and but the main the main reason I went well, for barbecue, but also because they said Al was going to be there. And I was like, holy shit, I get to finally fucking meet Al Jorgensen, you know, but he didn't show up. Yeah. But the part two of that story was like, I was at the very first uh, Roll to Cock show, the one that's the You Goddamn Son of a Bitch like documentary or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like up, up against the stage on speaker left, you know, and like during, I think it was No Devotion or one of those songs, like smash this like beer bottle and it's like slicing up his arm, you know, or whatever. So there's all this blood pouring down his arm and he's like sticking his arms into the crowd. You know, I've got blood on my face and stuff. And I was like, holy fuck, I got Al Jorgensen's blood on me. This is amazing. And then like 60 seconds later, I'm like, oh shit, I think I have AIDS. <laughs> You know, so I was like fucking wiping his blood off me or whatever. It was like, yeah, but it was, but I never actually got to. I got his blood on me, and I was at a picnic that he didn't show up at. Well, you know, that's that's two pretty good stories. I'll, I'll take. <laughs> I don't. I never have gotten Uncle's blood on me. But, but yeah, my, my closest thing I got is oh, I was friends with his daughter on Facebook. See, my story sucks. You got me beat. This is true. Yeah, you got poked by her though. That's like poke me. <laughs> poke me. Well, oh yeah. Maybe I can marry into the family. I could be like industrial loyalty, right? Right. At, but, but first, I got I to gotta get the Amish girls pregnant, and then I'll work on the Jurgensen. And actually, the very first tattoo I had was like, uh, he had this like homemade cross on his arm, you know? Um, and I, I love that guy so much. I was like, you know what? I need a fucking homemade cross on my arm that I've since covered up. But like for a year, like we had this cross connection. What are you reading? 
I'm, I'm reading, I'm looking at your sex tape right now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know Paris Hilton, do you? No, no, I, I, <laughs> I partied in this, like, it, you know, back in the day, it was like Coachella 2007 or something. We were in Frank Sinatra's house and uh, it's really funny, Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan showed up. And my buddy, I think my buddy Caesar was DJing. I was like a photo of him. My partner, we do all photo together. He, he's DJing and I think she's like behind him. And I remember like, I forgot, like it's, it's so long ago that I, I forgot if her or Lindsay Lohan like asked one of us for cocaine. And like, if you want to go to, to cocaine or something like that, right? And I don't, and this is funny because like this happened to me again over the summer, but like, it's like when a girl asks you to go do cocaine with them, it, it, you know, it, it means they want to do cocaine, but also there's a chance you, you, they want to fuck, right? Did you use one of those Viagra pills? <laughs> but I don't do cocaine, so I was just like, no, I'm cool. You know, and I was like, wait, I could have gone to like do whatever. <laughs> and the same thing happened to me this, you know, the summer I was at Kit Kat Club in Berlin and this like, you know, Lithuanian, like six foot one, a hundred pound model was like, she's like dancing, we're like dancing. And, and uh, she's like, hey, do you want to come with me to the bad sermon to cocaine? And I was like, everyone, every accent is going to be a German accent, by the way, because I'm not, I don't have the bandwidth to do different accents. <laughs> She's like, do you want to come to the bathroom with me and do some cocaine? I'm like, no, I'm doing coke. And she looked at me like, like, and I like, I like, I called her mom a whore, and I was like, oh wait, and I and like, you know, it took me a second to process it because I was also kind of fucked up. And then by by, by the time I took me a second to realize that she was asking me to go to the bathroom with her, uh, she had walked away, and I was like, oh, you fucking idiot. <laughs> so you know, the 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 moral of the story is, you know, do cocaine. Oh, you do cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Not cocaine, like I could have fucked Lindsay Lohan and I could have fucked, you know, some model at the Kit Kat Club um, if I didn't yeah, know. Yeah. Do, you, do you know Wade Hampton? Hmm. Do I know who? Wade Hampton? No, I don't. I can't. I was at a party at his house one time, one of those parties where I played for Teff. And I, there was some porn star there. and I, The porn star that was a DJ for a while. Do you remember who that was? Um, we, there's a couple. There was, there, like, recently? No, like in the late 90s. In the late 90s. Oh, God, no, I don't remember. Oh, I wish I... I've had too many shots of tequila, so I can't have my memories tonight. Yeah, but she was there. Not that I could have done cocaine or sex with her, but it was just like, it was just cool being in the same room with like one of these great porn stars, you know? So I can only imagine what it's like to be in the same room with Paris Hilton. Was it Tracy Lords? David Alter? Davidian. Oh, Tracy Lords, that's her name, yeah. Yeah, Tracy Lords is hot, or was. I mean, she's still hot. She's, I, I don't know. I don't know what she looks like now, but she was DJing at like his house, you know. And I was like, "Holy fuck, this is Tracy Lords." Yeah. Where's Where's Johnny with his Viagra? Because like, there's no way you're, there's no way you're gonna press Tracy Lords otherwise. Yeah, that's true. You know, I I, I gotta say, like, um, you know, like porn sex and regular sex, very different. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've never I've never spun at soft leather, so I don't really know. I slept with a couple of porn stars, and you know, it's like you're, you're like. I mean, like the first, you know, one or two, you're like, you're like, I mean, I'm, I'm like, so I was like, someone's like, oh my God, like they're, they're like expecting some kind of crazy performance, but it's like, no, they're, you know, it's like every ultimately at the end of the day, like everyone's normal, you know, quote unquote. And it's it's like, a hug. Huh? Yeah. They just, want, everyone's, hug. they just want to cuddle. They want to cuddle. Everyone likes a good cuddle. So, you know, we like, we have a little, we have a couple of whiffs of, of this bad boy and then we cuddle, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, out of Sturgis, there's always porn stars out there, and like, you'll you'll go to hang out with them or meet them or whatever. And I don't know what the point of this story is, so never mind. Very good, great, thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> but you know, it's like you know, who you don't need punches, you get the Amish. So it's like you know, we got a fucking pandemic, and it's all free right now. I think that's a lot more pressure. To fuck an Amish girl than they have sex with someone who's a porn oh, Especially when dad's in the room. Yeah. And when you're trying to produce a son. Like, yeah. there's like a lot of, lot of different pressures. What do you think about? What do you, what do you, gotta think, what do you think we gotta think about in order to produce something? Um, yeah. <laughs> What's that? You don't have any kids, do you? Oh my God, I fucking know. No, no, no half Amish kids yet? Well, good luck. You know, keep trying. No. I had some kids living here for a year with a girlfriend and I just realized that it's a good thing. I never had kids. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably be a great dad if they would like raves. Well, you know, you're still young. You got plenty of time. 
<laughs> Speaking of, can I borrow some of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you do, if you end up doing it even further, <laughs> I'll catch a flight and I'll come because I'm sure the flights are going to be cheap. It's like after September 11th, so I'll, I'll have an excuse to come up there and I'll bring. They're going to be. They're going to be paying you to come here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, because I know I know you won't book me, so I know I'll I'll just get I'll make my money for the flights by impregnating Amish girls, and that way it'll pay for my whole trip. <laughs> There's no Amish girls up or further, is that? You'd have to stay here for a while. That's we can, fine. but I got an apartment in the barn with like, it's a nice apartment, so we can make this happen. As long as there's Wi-Fi, I'll bring my own poppers. I'll bring the Viagra. I, I don't I don't even have cell service here. Oh to be honest. How are you doing this? What are you doing? With? I have Wi-Fi. Morse code? No, no. Well, <laughs> I got a fire built outside, and there's like a Native yeah. American guy fanning it, you know. So it's like I'm sending smoke signals. <laughs> it's right, working, well, right? You can hear me. Yeah, yeah. No, it's working. It's it's amazing what they what they can what they've done with and it. So there's no Wi-Fi in the barn. The Wi-Fi goes to about the garden. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll pay rent and Viagra pills. I'll give you one a week. You can split it in two. So you can you can have sex twice a week, which is good. That's good, right? That's good. You know. Hold on, let me grab a pen. I gotta write this down because yeah. this may be a deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, as, as me as a man who's gotten older, you know, is getting older. Uh, you know, you don't have sex as often, so I think twice a week is, is pretty healthy for. <laughs> Especially when it's gonna like, if that works, and then I do the Amish thing, you could end up walking away with like three grand. Yeah, right up there it is. Good deal. All right, I'm in. Cool. Is that a plant behind you to this side? There's a plant here and a plant there. Oh, they are plants. Okay. Yeah, and I got more plants over there. This, this one over here looks like a wig, and I was just like trying to figure out what was going on. It is a wig. It's a, it's a wig. No, no, what's the, pink, what's the pink thing in front of it? Oh, you want to see it? This is great. Watch this. Oh, my fucking God. Is that your bedroom? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. I feel like I need to file a police report now. You should. Okay, so check this out. This is a famous sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> this is a famous sculpture. It's like a Hercules wrestling somebody, right? But I found this ceramic statue in like a Mexican uh, flea market in Boyle Heights. And it's like 10 bucks. And look, I mean, look at this terrible paint job. Look at this guy. But it's, it's like a really famous sculpture, but like some like, you know, Mexican guy made this. And it's cool, like you can see, like he's like, look at that. <laughs> what is this third hat down in the middle? It's someone. It's like a monkey or something. I don't know, but he's. I don't know what it's going. But it was, look at look at this. Oh, so there is a. Oh my god. Yeah. And I think this, this, check it out. Look at that guy. And this works. Yeah, isn't that cool? Look it up. It's like Hercules wrestling. It's an actual famous sculpture. I think we just got deleted from Facebook, bro. No, no way. <laughs> Maybe if I just do this for the yeah, just like I'm just gonna talk with this with this <laughs> in front of my face. Yeah, just talk into the dick. <laughs> so, so what happened is, I had this penis right next to my face. So I, I'm not talking about oh, that. Seriously, but seriously, what is that third head connected to? I don't, I don't know. It, it's like a it's a monkey head. Where's the body? There's no body. There's no body. There's no body. No body. There's Leo's. All right, yeah, it's hollow too. If you're in a pickle, it's like a, it's like an, it's like a, a Mexican ceramic fleshlight. You throw it's, like little, a, it's like a fleshlight with two dudes and a monkey. I like it. Yeah, you, you throw some of that Mexican sour cream, that hokoke in here. So, so can, will that fit in a USPS flat rate box? I mean, probably. You want one? All right, good. Yeah, yeah. Could you send that to me? <laughs> Uh, uh, they have a ton of. I actually know that place is fucking closed right now. I, I could buy like a. We could just decorate the whole barn with this shit. I'm lonely, bro. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm actually sorry I asked. No, you shouldn't be sorry. Wait, I'm just gonna put it down here. <laughs> Talk to. Do you have a name for that thing? It's Hercules. This is Hercules right here. What oh, is Hercules? Oh, it's Hercules. Son of. Right. Okay, look at that. Look at this guy. He's a. He's a. He's a demigod, and this is how he's in doubt. Look at this guy. He doesn't, whole, shave very, he doesn't shave very well. He's, he's not circumcised either. Yeah. Look at, the whole, look at that detail. This is, this is fucking craftsmanship. Uh, but, huh? it, was only 10, it was only 10 bucks? I think it was only 10. I forgot. I, you know, I think my girlfriend bought it for me. She's a sweet woman. Very sweet woman. You know, she, she wanted to you know like when I was lonely. I could just, Current girlfriend or past? 
Current, current. She's in the other room waiting for me to be done. She's like, quit talking. She's, she, she's, she's a keeper. Yeah, she know. I mean, yeah. Wait, is she in the hot tub or the pool right now? She's, I, I don't know. I, I, I told her to leave the room so I could talk dirty to my rave friends. Okay, but seriously, all yeah. these pictures on Facebook, do you really have a hot tub and a pool? Yeah, absolutely. I have, I have a fucking hot, a jacuzzi in my bathroom, too. And, and all these girls that are hanging on you all the time in these pictures, you're not paying them? It's, like, legit? <laughs> no, I'm not paying for anyone's company. No. I somehow convince people that I'm cool. <laughs> doesn't make any fucking sense to me. <laughs> you, just, you just got to bust out Hercules in that bottle of Viagra, and they're like, hell yeah. <laughs> like, listen, why don't you want to hang out with me? I got Costco, tequila. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bring the bring the poppers in. You're good. Oh yeah. See, this is it. This is all you need to party. <laughs> hey, ladies. <laughs> this is a fucking party, dude. Fuck. So no, Doug, wonder, no wonder Mo was like, so excited to play this party. Yeah, I mean, I was so bummed, dude. You know, actually, let me tell you the story. So the party got busted like five minutes after the doors opened, right? And then we like the cops like finally left at like two fifteen. And we were like in the empty warehouse with like Mo and some of his friends. And I was like, let's fucking do it. Let's open the doors. There's still like 200 people outside. And so we opened the warehouse back up and let everyone back in. <laughs> and they get shut down a second time? No. Nope. Nope. Oh, nice. Yeah. But have, and, you ever, have you ever had Derek Basic play for you? No, I haven't. I've tried to get him to come play for me, uh, but he has never played for me. So he it, can, uh, man. He's amazing i ask tell him ask him why he doesn't come to play my party I've, I've, oh. I've, maybe he doesn't like you i don't know maybe he doesn't but i'm pretty likable so i don't know <laughs> why that would be <laughs> he uh yeah he's played for me a bunch and he's a cool guy and he's the one who helped we get we had kevin key play last year yep. from skinny puppy or whatever and like and he lives in la so you should have him play too you have all these fucking people to play for. I have had, you do? i've had a lot of cool people play from that, oh, you have. I watch, I see all the shit. It's good. I'm jealous. I, I definitely I want to get Kevin Key. I want to get Basic. Uh, who else am I missing from L in LA who hasn't played? Uh, Douglas McCarthy lives out there. Yeah, he's played. He, you know what sucks is uh, he was supposed to play for me with his new group called Drag on March 14th, and like two days before is when they announced they were shutting everything down because of the fucking coronavirus. Oh, that was recent. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, he played. He played, he played it further in sixteen. He was awesome. He was a super nice guy. Yeah, he's he's really funny. He the first time he played for me, I was like super nervous, obviously. And he came to play, and he's like, "Okay, just make sure there's no drinks around my computer," because he plays off a laptop. And I was like, "Okay, what do you want to drink? Like, you know, what, what what's your writer?" He's like, "I just want a bottle of gin." So we're like fifteen minutes into his set. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm like quick towards the front, like making sure everything's all right. And I'm like, all right, this is good. Like people are anyway. It's a lot of people here. All of a sudden, the music cuts out. <laughs> and I run to the booth. I was like, "What the fuck's going on?" And he has spilled the contents of his oh, on his laptop. So he had to flip over the laptop and shake out the gin before he could start playing it. And I was like, "You know, it's so funny that this." He was like, "Like no drinks around my laptop," and then he <laughs> spills his gin. I, I, I got I got two Douglas MacArthur stories. You know, like I obviously like worship the guy or whatever. You know, I think he's Nitzarab and Front Two Four Two were like the first two things I was like super into or whatever so when he played at further than 16 he shows up and he lost his laptop on the plane so like you know that's worse than spilling spilling drunks on it drinks on it oh my god and uh but then it ended up he didn't actually lose his laptop he just put it in a different piece of luggage or something and didn't forgot or whatever yeah. and then the second thing that happened was we had this big void sound system and the stage you know they got to plug in the speakers so we had the stage like three feet back from the sound system. So like him and Fixmer are playing on the stage, but you know, Douglas McCarthy being Douglas McCarthy, he wants to be on top of the speakers, like walking, you know, back and forth closer to the people. So he's jumping back and forth between like the speakers and the stage. And then right before, I think they, you know, I think murderous said he started, he like goes to jump onto the speakers and oh. doesn't jump far enough and like, <laughs> down between the, the speakers of this stage so like here's my fucking hero with like bloody shins you know and he breaks his glasses like falling through like this or he didn't break his glasses he fucked something else up yeah it was it was embarrassing That's... but he killed him so it was cool god and he had a good time and i think it was a good when i when we booked kevin like i told him to talk to douglas and see if he liked it and and he said he did so 
I guess he had fun. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're two hours and 45 minutes. I think we've talked enough. We'll do this again. It, I think we got we got some good shit going. It's going to be funny. No, uh, I, need, I, I, I need to like promote something. Oh, yeah. What are you promoting? Yeah, go ahead. So... Uh, coming to, coming to further in September. <laughs> Even further, www.dropbase.net. <laughs> uh, we do these. Uh, I I don't actually need to promote anything. I'm good. When's the next? Is there, when are they going to start up the record label? Who's the next release? Well, we d- we did a limited record for further last year, which was the first record we did since like oh six or seven, and it was, it was a limited thing, and it sold out. And everyone's talking about like how record label labels are like uh, a labor of love now and whatnot. But for what? So this girl just came out of the bathroom naked. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sorry. She really is. Oh, and, yeah. I can see the reflection of your glasses. Huh? I can see, oh, you can see the reflection. Right. I didn't. She she's been in there for two hours and forty five minutes. That's weird. Yeah. What are you doing in there? <laughs> Anyway, so that sold out and it was like it made money, it like made more money than records did like in the 90s and like the artists all got paid like a really good amount and everybody's stoked. So I kind of was either one thinking this is awesome, like I should put on more records or two, I should go out on a fucking high note and just like let this be it, you know? Yeah, I mean, maybe once a year it'd be a cool thing to commemorate every year. Yeah, we're, we're, we're putting out the back catalog uh digitally or whatever like on Bandcamp, yeah. and i think we're like about a third way through we got this cool guy michael wens who's like doing all the mastering like here for us yeah, he's and, in the chat tell him oh, you, oh he is yeah he's saying that you suck he's what he's, he's saying that you're 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 awful dude dude i just gave you a shout out michaelwens.com or wensmastering.com <laughs> go there for all your mastering needs seriously though these these like dat tapes which are like right how do I do that? Right there. <laughs> like those are all the old drop bass records on DAT. And like, so like Paul Birkin recorded them all digitally. And like, you know, those are fucking 25, 30 year old DAT. So they're not actually good anymore. They're older. Then, huh? They're older than me. <laughs> right. So like, there's a lot of dropouts. It's just not the quality is low, but when's like, he's a fucking genius, you know? So he's been able to like rebuild like all these tracks, you know? And like, takes a lot of time and then we we put them out and like every week or every day actually i make about like five dollars on Bandcamp from people buying this shit you know oh wow you're what's the band camp is it dropbase.net uh, uh, yeah just go to Bandcamp and search drop base network do it all right cool what else <laughs> to plug? anything else to plug um no all right sign up with your drop base it, when's is really in here yeah, he's in the fucking chat, man. And he said something bad about me? Everyone, it, the whole chat is people saying terrible things about him. Jesus Christ, you know, what kind of cult is this where they say negative shit? <laughs> no mean, acid for anyone! Mostly your friends. <laughs> Tough love, I guess, right? Yeah, that's, that's, no Why are they up at 2.30 on a Sunday night? That's the real question. So <laughs> maybe what I, really, what I really should be doing is calling out all their drug problems. You should. What's the, right? What is it? No, no, that's it. Well, well <laughs> good dude. <laughs> okay, so what's his name? Is addicted to no? They're all on speed and they all got issues. <laughs> I've never actually done that, so I don't know. Why do you have that in your bedroom, bro? Why do I have poppers in my bedroom? Are you kidding me? Okay, you know what? <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> what you need to do is you need to find the closest place you can buy these to you. I don't know how, maybe, maybe you ask them nicely at Walmart for VHS cleaner. <laughs> but it's like an hour drive. Dude, you, if you have not done this, okay, you cannot combine this with Viagra. It'll pop your, your heart out. But, uh, but you do this when you're having sex. It's life-changing. You don't have to be gay to do it. This is the, it's 2020. Don't be, you know, like get some of this so for real it's going to change your sex life you promise it won't make me gay i mean it, it, it'll be an improvement 
You know, everyone's good. 2020, everyone's good. That's true. An- anal for everyone. Here we go. Yeah, actually, yeah, I got to have this as anal on it. I would go get it, but it, it'd be like, you'd be staring at my fucking bedroom for like 30 seconds, and I don't want to <laughs> be like everybody. I'll wear it for the next time we talk, I'll wear my anal hat. Is this a Metallica? This isn't a Metallica shirt, is it? Oh, it looks like it, huh? Yeah, I thought it was, but it's not. You got it at Walmart? It looks like it, huh? I got right. it at the stop. Right. Yeah, see, this is, this is my coronavirus shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is you've been doing all this fucking talking about viagra shit and the other night when i talked to you you were wearing a viagra shirt so like, i'm starting to think maybe this is like this is some sort of pl- i've just been a you're a corporate shill yeah viagra sponsor me <laughs> oh aaron stigberg mr fucking newbie jumped in who else has jumped in here that's it. greg corner oh we got a bunch of old guys in here cool yeah, i don't have i have a new computer finally my last computer was from 2006 yeah, but I'm not multitasking. I'm trying to focus on what you would have to talk to me about. Oh no, you're just supposed to tell me war stories. Uh, and what? You're just supposed to tell me your war stories, and then I just counter back talking about poppers and Viagra. You know, if we were to talk war stories, this would take twelve hours minimum. Well, good for the next one because we're about to hit three hours. And I don't think anyone wants to watch this for three hours. I'm not Joe Rogan yet. <laughs> All right, so let's not make this awkward. Fuck you. Goodbye. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. Take care, you sick son of a bitch. All right, later. Oh, wait.